No be so. Eh? Yes, sir. But as the Pekin they grow, it gets where that Pekin go reach. That Pekin go become independent of you. If you no understand them and continue to impose yourself and force yourself on that Pekin, you go lose your respect. And once you lose your respect, the thing where you go get back from that your Pekin, you no go like them. If you continue to force yourself, now fight where you go begin fight. I talk and say the major problem I see in everything that has happened, even though your own, you get your own photo, from their own side, they say, your mother-in-law, he no know in boundary. He no know where in boundary and power reach. He they for in house. He they determine, he they force, say, my picking must do this, my in-law must do this, my picking must do this. If no be like that, I no go agree. I tell him, say, even for a see day, if he talks, say, two of them, I no go marry, on I won't marry, no go feel stop him. The highest way go do be say, you no go they greet, you no go they see, but you go marry. I no talk, say, not the good thing, no, but not the reality. Many parents, where they listen to me today, know, say, he get their children, where be say, they talk to their children, say, I no want make you marry this person. The Peking refuse, they marry, or you no know, agree marry. You fight them until you die, they marry. But if we realize them, we know our boundaries. You go know where to stop. You go know how to advise your picking. You go know how to advise your in law. You know, go there for your own house. They make law inside your in law house. Say you be mother in law, no mean say you be person. Where go they make law for, the mother, for your son in law house? You know, say some people feel confused and mother in law, father in law. And you, we talk and say, person where don't reach the age of marriage, he don't become father. No be everything where you see you go respond to the way where he come. You remember? Yes, sir. And that we were able to agree. But it be like sir, here say even after we agree now we talk, say your mother in law go there here, say you no can agree again. No be you go talk him. Make I tell who bring that message to me? Take the microphone. Hey, good morning, sir. Good morning. They said the woman come yesterday with some list. Say the mediation what we do say she no agree. So I even call her now. Say where she did. She said she did beggar they come now. Now I say wait till happen. She say she no agree for the mediation. Now so okay, no problem with the wait for her, sir. She no agree. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you see, they insist the white wedding make the pastor do her. Uh, no problem. Okay, even yes. pastor no talk say no go do white wedding. He no go do wedding. He talk say I go wed. The woman talk say. Either you do church wedding or you do court wedding. Make it be so not do wedding way be formal wedding. And then the conversation, the pastor no talks, I no go wed. The wife no talks, I no go wed. They say, I go do wedding I won't do when I they ready to do them. No be what you talk. That is what I said. But if you look at the marriage they said I did not do, mm. over 200 human beings. No, no, no. Even that one I know say they no talk through. We confirm say over. this man marry. Over. Even that one, we know say you no know, talk through. We confirm say the man marry traditionally. Many things there where they no talk through, where the woman no talk through. Here. 17 years. I married my wife at the age of 19. Mm. 97. You no go allow that one. You no need to you no need okay. to repeat that one. We don't do the one where we do mediation, no be by force. If we do um if she agree here, yes, that day say. She agree. She they happy with everything where we do. Can't return back again. Say she no agree. Because we no give her waiting she want. No problem. Because mediation, nah, nobody say you must get what you want. Now you win here, you lose here. Now win, win, lose, lose. But as we say, even after I don't take time, tell them, say, Madam, you overbearing. You are crossing your boundaries. And they no go good for you. Because that they destructive. When you do that, you go give your child the boldness to begin to respond to you. From responding to you, it go turn to insult. From insult, it go turn to fighting back. I take time explaining to Ram, and she agree. In front of camera here, is they recorded? They hug themselves, and the worker come. He go, he come back, say no agree again, no problem. So you go continue. Yes. Because she even pray for pastor and the daughter, Marcel. She prayed. She prayed, she prayed for us. 
at the end of the mediation that day the issue is this uh -uh. i don't know uh -uh. okay uh -uh. okay i don't want to talk waiting i hear okay mm. i don't want to talk waiting i hear about uh some mother-in-laws hmm? your own be say go with the mind so i don't make peace hmm? yes sir no respond to ram the way where you see him give him time it's okay sir. go with that thing where i tell you with the mind say you don't make peace and now you be the head of that home hmm? yes sir no respond to ram as you they see him give him time nothing where time no fit solve thank you very much Thank you so much. But for people who follow this program, make one I know say most of the things where they talk about this man not be true. Most of the things where they talk about this man, it gets some way be true, but most of them not be true. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Your wife just walk out enter studio. I no go let them talk because studio okay. get time. They not even suppose I allow her enter by this time. We don't close studio door. Huh? I no go allow her. Any other day where she won't talk, may she come when studio they open. His Excellency, Dr. Rabiu Musa Kwankwasi, was here by 7 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> we know they do mediation for him. <laughs> <laughs> but he taking time, come. Uh, you, where they say we do mediation for you, spend out, you pay? <laughs> no. You pay us any money? I didn't. Uh -huh. yeah. And now you go work out the doing and got a lot the entire studio by now. You know, go talk. <laughs> you know, he's a woman of three kids. Uh, so it takes uh, time uh, to. And a woman of three kids. <laughs> Elijah, how many kids you get? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, how many you get? You get four. <laughs> Who gets? You get five. Yes. And all of you, they're here now. <laughs> My friend, go. My, my so pastors, they like to defend their wives anyhow. If you hear pastor talk about a wife for church, you go, you know, go grease another woman day. Now, mommy, G. You. Eh? Mommy, G. You. Make one appreciate and make it go. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, my brothers, my sisters, if I look, on I go see, say, time don't they reach. It don't even reach. Make we allow His Excellency to address us. But before he address us, he gets some people yesterday where ordinary president talks say, make we give 10,000 10, naira. Then the studio. Sir. Um, uh, who, Zila Zia Day, who hold the money? When I don't give them the money. Huh? Talk to the microphone now. Zila Zia, she's outside, sir. They didn't give them the money. Go and bring 100,000 for me now. Okay, sir. Any of you are there for studio? Yes, sir. Please stand up, stand up. Because promise, na promise. Waiting, why I won't take on Because na example, we won't show His Excellency. Even though na so in the doing own work for the report where we get when he be governor. We know they make promise, we know keep them. If you make promise, na the most important thing make you keep them, make you fulfill them. How many of you are there for studio? About Give them microphone. Them. Hmm? About five of them, sir. Give them microphone quickly. Quickly. Your name now. Good morning. My name is Abraham Yako. Okay. Why will they give why you come studio? I called in yesterday in respect of the the question. So later in the day they call me. So mm. I should be present here. This okay. Morning. What in be that question? Uh, in summary, uh, uh, what's the the event? Talk to microphone. So what's the important event happening on uh, yesterday, on 12, 12? For the history of Nigeria, yeah. waiting happened. Waiting be the landmark event. Yes, yeah. Where happened that yesterday? Where be 12th 12th. December? Yes. For the history of Nigeria, because if we don't know our history, we not gonna know how we go fit make, fit, make progress. Person we no know where he starting journey. When journey is spoiled for him, you know they know how he go take go back. <laughs> we ask ordinary yeah. president talk say make we ask any person we go feel remember landmark event where happened for Nigeria for the history of Nigeria. 
for the 12th, 12th of 12th, 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 12th. December. What will be your answer? Uh, my answer is uh, the federal capital was moving from Lagos to Abuja mm -hmm. on 12th December 1990. And we talked, say, maybe the correct answer. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't follow up. Now nah, the correct answer, now nah, make you come. Uh, make you give to the other people, make them call their name. Your names? My name is Natariza Thomas. Yeah. And um, yesterday, when they asked the question, I they among those with this studio that yesterday, I follow answer the question. Uh, make and you, later, okay, wait, wait. You answer them direct from your head or you copy them? <laughs> but. <laughs> Let eh? me say I copy anyway. You know copy. It say <laughs> I say both be say the reason we say as you take answer that kind of question, it is very funny. Mm. I can't say okay, make I just answer that way so that I feel follow laugh. Mm. But well the thing we say as you ask yesterday, me too. I get re reason why I mentioned that day because I know one go like um, my elder we been talk yesterday. They explain why mm. same picking be so 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 date. Mm. Something happened like that. So 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 date. Mm. Something too happened to me. So, so date. But I know go one mention. I get my reasons mm. why no one mention them. Mm. Uh, so yes, uh, I get my reasons uh, why no, no it, one it, it mention good. them. Make you not mention. Make you yes. appreciate them. Thank you. To the next person, please. Good morning, consultant. Hey. Good morning. Your name now. My name now. Moa for Supreme. And now you follow answer? Yeah, for studio. How you take answer? You did inside studio or you call in? No, I didn't inside studio. Okay. Uh, thank you. Make we appreciate them. Where the other people? Quickly. Good morning, consultant. I Good morning. Your own name? My name is Flourish Olua Bumi Igwe. Mm. I called yesterday mm. uh, I, and I came from Shorai's Clothing. Mm. Yes. So yesterday when I hear the question, mm. Now say I have been the court clothes where I go so. Mm. Now I tell my colleagues they say I'm gonna call. Oh. But you oh. Google them? No. And no, we say you Google them. <laughs> <laughs> I know Google. Well, I know say in this age of technology, uh, it be it day easy for people to find answers and find solutions. We know they discourage them all. It good make you use the tools where they your hand. But no be say for example, hall you go begin Google. Mm -hmm. You get things where you go put for your head. So what do you go tell ordinary president and break the family for that? Ah, hembe, lembe. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Begin to give them the money one by one. Okay. Come, come forward. Time. Come forward, all of you, quickly. Okay. Mm, come forward. As you, they talk. They talk, they come. Okay, consultant, I now a big opportunity where I don't they look for be this. Mm. And Help uh, me organize them now. Now mm. tell I be. From uh, Shorai's clothing. Mm. Now, man cloth are they so. I know they so man cloth. Uh -uh. I don't they look for opportunity where I go so for ordinary president. Mm. And I feel this is a golden opportunity I have. I even come with my tape proof. Eh? I say now immediately like this. I won't you go measure them quick, quick. Because I don't know the time where they go allow me enter this gate again. Uh, okay. And I go so for you. So for everybody who I feel so for. You go measure me. I then go measure I go you tell like. you how much inches where you go add for ordinary president. Okay. <laughs> no problem, so, sir. Uh, so that you go take them, um, you know, say you don't get a measurement. Yeah. Make it no be say you lose as you come today, where you know the studio. If I because not, you yes, know where. Yes. So you go measure me. No, I will tell you how many I, inches. I go do answer. Uh -huh. Thanks uh -huh. for Thank the question. Hembe, lembe. Oh, lo, lo, lo. The next person. Okay. Quickly, quickly. Um, okay. Good morning, Konzata Ike. Your name? My name is Emmanuel Keka. Uh huh. So yesterday, today, in fact, I'm privileged to be here. I'm wow. a listener of this program very well. Mm. I use it like a vitamin C. Mm. Yes. I always listen to this program. It's the one I was listening to this program. Mm. I couldn't hear this question. Mm. I said, this question, I was supposed to know this question. Mm. I try, 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 try. A number busy. All this. I said, I know this call must go. But you get so the answer. So all of a sudden, I get the answer. Mm. So in the evening, when uh, Auntie Kemi now called, I said, I said, my name is Auntie Kemi. I'm calling from Rumari. I said, now tap my wife. I said, you might already do it. I'm so you don't win now. I don't win now. <laughs> Make an appreciate them. The next person, please. Your name? Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Who is giving that money? Please give it quickly. We don't good get morning, time. Break Share the, the money. To, mm -hmm. You don't receive them. Yes, sir. I won't make camera see them or make it no be like say so we make promise we no fulfill them. You don't okay. Good morning, cousin Ike. Mm. Uh, my name is okay. I'm gone. My name is Tribe Onu Isaka. Yeah. Um, yesterday, you I I hear the question and mm. I call in. 
yesterday. How it be you say an answer to question bring you come to the Human Rights Radio and Television Studio? So I feel I feel good. You feel good? Yes. Uh, this is my first time of coming to this place. Mm. And I'm very grateful. The thing where God, the use ordinary president, do for this program, Break at a Family, Human Rights Radio and Television, where, how it be you? Yes, I normally follow the program. Mm. And um, anytime I follow the program, I wish to be in its shoes. Mm. Yes. Why? Because, uh, because it's changed life. Mm. Yes. It changed lives. Yeah, yes. Thank it you. help a lot of people. Make an appreciate and the next person. Like him. My name is uh Adi Zika Sambu. Mm. I called in yesterday when the question was asked. Mm. And uh towards evening, mm. somebody called me that uh, I should win the studio this early morning. Mm. So I feel happy to be here. I Equally thank God how God has been using the ordinary president mm. to affect life positively. Thank you. Mm. Yes, okay. Talk? Now the last person be that. No, sir. Two uh. other persons sent their account number. Okay. Which you remitted to their account. Which will be remitted. How many are they here now? Seven. Kemi is one of them. Okay. So why are you not standing up? I won't. <laughs> if you never give him the money, keep him back. Ah, consultant, I Okay, no, hold sorry. on. Make we take a call from Dr. Jume. Because Dr. Jume is now one of the persons where we say inside FCT. You know, say when you talk about moving federal capital to Abuja, you know, go fit remove FCT from there now. FCT administration. Ah, the bill I said, I don't lose them. Make I call him back. Make I call him back. Uh... By nine o'clock on the dot, His Excellency will start to address us. Mm. I did try to call Dr. Jume back. Maybe instead they try to call me, uh, make I hold on small, see whether in own call go enter. Make it no be like say, you want to say something? Oh, yeah, say I'm quickly as we Okay, my name is Natariza Thomas. Mm. I want to use this opportunity to thank um, our ordinary president. Mm. Um, oh, oh, yeah, hold on there, hold on there. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. I don't know where Dr. Jume is there, where they say we're not going to fit, talk with them. In the trouble, in the struggle to call in, he called now. I pick him, but uh, he know the, we know they hear him. Uh, you go, you want to thank ordinary okay. president. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to the ordinary president mm. and the things we in they do. Mm. And number two, be say not be just the money. The money we in give us really they very important and good to us. Mm. And another thing, be say I see mention them. Many people get to know about that date. As I mentioned, um, I come out outside. I was very happy. I was celebrating. Mm. This is something that I don't share with people. Mm. But I went out, I was like, ah, do you know that this date is this? Uh, do you know people uh, come and uh, they hold say, on, ah. Hold on, again, let's see if we go fit connect with Dr. Jume. Hello, good morning. Gi. Good morning. Mm. Yes, yeah, so now who the van with us? Make you introduce yourself by yourself. Dr. Juma Amadu, mm. Acting Director, Reform Coordination and Service Improvement Department, XTD, mm. the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Olu Sade, additionally, to my thank you now for the awareness on the help of Chris yesterday, mm. and that innovative idea make us see everybody know what happened yesterday mm. for the history of Nigeria, and we appreciate them very well. Like, it's not so now at this point. And I may could just talk about when I help to appreciate and yesterday nine did you like people answer nine did you when they are banging that they need to see the time from Abuja six nine the energy head of state they they got problems sort of traffic control. Right, Doctor Juma, your your network they very poor, very poor. But go on, make we see whether we go still get something from you. Okay, they, because. After the 
he was in the Hapu Poli because he said, Betamu found that location. Mm. We will call our capital. Mm. Then they, have, they now set up the seven white men, a, a panel led, led by justice at Sonla, but a nice period that panel. Mm. They come transverse Nigeria, I can't say Abuja, 90th century, is it central? They speak. Mm. And so he went out to radio day. That be the center of Nigeria, Congo. Let's have put that. Where after radio now on top of Papa Pink, mm. the center of Nigeria. That I don't know that one. No, oh, not being savvy. This one, no. you see, tell us. So, the consulate, I put that central neutrality, and the people for Abuja, they know plenty. Now, they could take better make the position. My government led the position. I think that we could take line in our Mutala Muhammad, neither very famous broker. Mm. They have been with us in their capital from Abuja. From Lagos to Africa, the Lagos to still remain the commercial capital of Nigeria, and Lagos to be this today. Mm. After that pronouncement, work starts. People come to Abuja from Sovereign or engineers come start work. The people they reluctant to move because moving people from where they then they used to be six times. Mm. So, government, they come, government, they go. Don't find it out coming out, said Kai, let's just take this good step. Every state for federal government come mm. to Abuja. Mm. Like that, the one in 1990. 12th of February 1991, I mean, mm. then they come move the capital, administrative capital, formally move from Lagos to Abuja. Mm. Nine work starts. So I don't think it's of this bad time until we get to where we are today. Mm. Let me also write one book based on my experience as a theater. Oh, you write now, one book? I, yes. Make an appreciate them. Because as you do this one now, it means that you don't preserve the knowledge and the experience where you get for your work. What will be the name of the book? Abuja, the Evolution and Development of the Capital City. Abuja, the, the Evolution, evolution and, development and Development of the Capital City. Capital City. Wow, this one and really, this one really fit in. Mm. This, so which time? You don't already, uh, this book where you write, you don't already make them um, available to the public? You don't launch them? Um? Yes. Yes, February last year, now we launched them. Um, our past minister then comes. Mm. I can see the So, I put that story. People can from any angle you want to take them, but the major thing is that the book capture all the basic information, the history of the people when they are butcher here. Hmm. Why government must move the capital from Lagos to Abuja, mm. and the successive minister, where may I don't work on that because I've been working since 1998. When Mama Kosongo late, Nandia minister that time, mm. he contributed until the current FCC minister. My story ends for 19 2015. Mm. My story. You go update Amo because as you yeah. still there, you they gain more experiences. They see more things. We go help us. But how people right go fit now. assess this book? The book, yes, and for it keeps on for human rights. The book they come there and get the book. Okay. Human rights review, yes, and the people come my office where I live and also get them. Okay. And the name of the book again, finally now. Abuja: The Evolution and the Development of the Federal Capital City. And the person where write them now. Doctor Jumai Amadu. Thank you. Make one appreciate her. Thank you, thank you. The kind work where Dr. Jumai Amadu they do in collaboration with us and even her office for uh, FCT, uh, na work where we they appreciate because most of the times when challenge come, when people come, we complain, we reach them. She they do her best to see say solution come. So thank you, thank you for coming, and uh, God bless you. May God multiply this money on top of her hand. Uh, because no be the money be the matter. Na make it be say with the touch lives in very positive ways. Thank you. Mm. Please. <laughs> finally, finally, we don't reach to the time. Where we say the big masquerade will come out. For people where they ask how they go take call in that studio, I go announce the number. But I no go take call until he finish. No, I no go announce the number. When he finish, I dare ready to take call. I go announce the number. Ordinary president started this program 
Itelo na, the person where we get for studio today as guest. He no come make it play. He no come make it talk story. He come make it join the presidential candidates where he be for other political parties, but he go tell us about his own. Make it tell Nigerians waiting be in plan. And they talk, say this one no be like that talk, talk, where some people they talk anyhow, anywhere. This one be say every single thing we in talk, we go hold them account for that. Time don't reach me when I hear from him. But I go start by asking him, make we know who he be. Many people, they don't know him. Even me where they talk, I don't see him for photo many places. But when I see him outside this morning, I no can recognize him because he don't young where we're fresh. <laughs> Your Excellency, sir. Nigerians and people will be friends of Nigerians where they follow this program, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Everybody they listening now. They won't know who will be Dr. Rabiu Musa Konkoso. Uh, where's the other microphone? Okay, it's on. Thank you very much, Consultant Ike. Mm. Let me start by thanking Almighty God for making it possible for us to be here. And let me take this opportunity to thank ordinary president for talking to us and I also want to thank him for the kind words. When I came in and I was told that he was not around, I wasn't very happy. Mm. But later when I was given opportunity to talk to him, and he told me that he was slightly indisposed mm. and also told me about his exam. Mm. I was happy for him on the issue of the exam and I wish him well. On top of that one, Your Excellency, you gave him prayer for him. He know well. He know yesterday, throughout yesterday in our hospital, he did. How yes. he take come off from hospital and won't go write the exam? I don't know how he take deceived doctors. We thank God mm. for that. And later I realized that we are in a safe hand. We are having consultant Ike in the shoes of Mr. Ordinary President. Mm. I'm so happy that uh, I took some time, about two hours here, watching and listening to people coming in with some issues. Mm. And so many things came to mind. And I believe if I get this job next year, being here for about two hours listening and watching what was happening, I believe I will be wiser than one minute before I came here. Mm. And it's an opportunity to thank the Berekete family for this initiative is something that should be encouraged by all Nigerians individually and collectively. And it's an opportunity to assure you that under our government, we will encourage you, we will empower you to do more for Nigeria. Mm. Uh, Your Excellency, sir, I don't want to interrupt you. When I see say person where I ask make we know him, the thing where they important to, to Ram, yes. know be about himself. When I see, I'm coming to that. You, I not say you go come, but you see now waiting you prioritize you they put ahead. When I see him, it now you see when you meet people from afar you fit no know them. 
But when you get opportunity to meet people closely, you go begin to discover things in them. We be say, even you, self, you go learn. Thank you very much. Please carry on. I don't want to interrupt you. But the way where you start sweet me for Bele Well Well, it took me for leave vacuum. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. And I believe we have so many things in common with Berkete family. You are working for the masses. You are working for the downtrodden Nigerians. And of course, anybody within the borders of this country. And I want to say that uh, we in Konkosia and we in the NNPP are doing the same thing. Mm. And therefore, to me, anybody I see here from the ordinary president down to our listeners, and of course, those who are here, including those who benefited from the good works of Berkete family, we are all Concosia members and all NNPP members whether we are putting red caps or not, because I know President himself is Concosia, but without red cap, his red cap is in his heart. Mm. So we are so happy about that. Now, if I may go back to the issue of my introducing my humble self, I want to say that uh, in terms of my work, my experiences, I started in my hometown primary school, Kwankosa Primary School. And then in those days, we had the opportunity for those students who have shown some level of um, being good are being tested and selected to the boarding primary schools in those days. So I had the opportunity to go to Gorza Boarding Primary School, then Craft School in Woodil, then Government Technical College in Kano, then Polytechnic in Kaduna, where I had my OND and HND. And I had my service NYSC in Ogun State. Wow. I had uh my service there i worked uh, at uh Ogun state water board and of course after my uh work in some other places in Ogun state now from there i had the opportunity to go to the uk and there i spent almost 10 years doing various courses and various institutes and various, at least two uh, universities mm. and one polytechnic. And uh, I came back in 1991 and I joined politics. I was lucky that uh, I was at peace with my community and uh, I won the election overwhelmingly to the extent that uh, the NRC candidate felt there was even no need to go to court. That and was in which year, Your Excellency? In 1992. 1992. So and when, election to what, sir? To House of Reps. To House of Representatives. So when I came here, I contested again and became the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps here in Abuja. And uh, in, by 2000 and 1993, we were kicked out by the military and therefore went back home oh you were the deputy speaker the time where military can take over exactly wow wow so um by 1994 there was uh, election to come for the constitutional conference i contested in kano mm. and i won the election i was part of the Constitutional Conference of 1994-95, mm. where we had an opportunity to draft the 
1999 Constitution. Constitution. And thereafter, we formed some associations and groups. And that time, we had an opportunity also to meet again mm. with our leader, General Sheikh Musa Adua of blessed memory, mm. where we started the PDM. And uh, unfortunately, he was arrested during the uh, conference. Mm. And uh, we continued with the PDM, but unfortunately, it was not uh, registered for obvious uh, political reasons. PDM, is it People's PDM. Democratic Movement? Yes. Okay. yes. So at the end of the day, we joined uh, another party. You go bring the microphone closer DPM. to your uh -huh, so that people go to hear yes. you. Yes. Well. And uh, along the line, we had elections in Kano. I was the leader of the uh, DPN. Mm. At the end of the day, DPN came number one party uh, in Kano in 1998. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, when the uh, head of state then died, uh, of course, all those were abandoned, and PDP and other parties came, which I joined in 1998. In fact, I was one of the uh, leaders of the party mm. at this level, and of course in Kano. And the following year, 99... Which of the parties then? PDP. PDP, okay. And uh, under the party, I contested and became the governor of Kano State mm. in 1999. And by 2003, there was election in Kano for many obvious reasons. Some sentiments came. Mm. I lost the election. But I was lucky, Chief Olishego Basanjo appointed me as Minister of Defense uh, in 2003, mm. uh, and then advisor to President on Darfur and Somalia. Mm. And uh, we finished in 2007. So when, you served as a Minister of Defense under Chief uh, Olushegu Obasanjo? Correct. Wow. So the... In 2007, mm. when Eradua came, I was appointed the representative of the Northwest in the NDDC, mm. with the headquarters in Patakot. Mm. And uh, 2010, for many obvious reasons, I had to resign. And uh, I was lucky also that year, we, I contested elections still in under PDP. Mm. and won that election and became uh, the governor of Kano State second time in 2011 mm. to 2015. Now, along the line, we realized there were some issues with the PDP. And we, together with some of my colleagues, governors at that time, mm. seven of us decided to bring some changes because... In our opinion, at that time, PDP had drilled, mm. and therefore the country required some democratic change. That was why we came together and formed APC and worked for the APC, believing that uh, we were going to have a better Nigeria. Mm. Unfortunately, when we won the election at the national level, and of course, many states across the country mm. who realized that uh, uh, we didn't have what we actually wanted to have. Mm. That's a better government. And uh, we tried really to advise the those in power at that time. Even though I was in the Senate myself, I contested election in 2015. Mm. I was in the Senate representing Colonel Central from 2015 to 2019. Mm. And along the line, we thought there was need for change, not only uh, here in Abuja, but especially in Kanu. Mm. So we thought we should uh, use the platform of PDP. And we worked so hard, at least everybody knows that we won election in Kanu in 2019. Mm. Uh, and uh, the power that be at that time thought uh, 
Kano was too important to be left in the hands of mm. opposition as they say it mm. uh, from the highest level so we had those uh, uh issues at the time and uh along the line we thought again that uh the pdp which we believe was not the best platform and uh, apc now proved to be worse than the uh pdp we thought we need your excellency closer closer to you we so need, that people where they here <laughs> we need a very different and solid mm. platform for nigerians mm. both politicians and even people who are interested in new nigeria mm. so we wanted to register new party but uh anek wouldn't want to register any party between 2000 and 19 election to 2023 mm. and therefore we selected the party that we feel and believe that is the best for us mm. in terms of name new nigeria because mm. that's exactly what we are yearning for so we selected new nigeria people's party mm. we brought in all our good friends those who believe in our ideology and ideology of course today i can confirm to you that is similar to the ideology of berkete family mm. and therefore we brought in all our brothers and sisters across the country mm. and populated the party mm. and and that's the new nigeria new nigeria people's party new nigeria people's party yes and our logo is a basket of fruits mm. at the center of Nigeria Nigeria map mm. so we are so happy that uh, we joined this party in March this year mm. and within one month we were able to register millions of Nigerians across the board along the line we were able to put our political structure today in all the wards in all the local governments mm. in all the states in all the six zones mm. and of course at the national level mm. so we are so happy and also today we have our candidates mm. across the country okay your excellency uh you go let me stop you a little there uh, first we say you don't talk who you be and the journey so far because even some of the questions where i've been one asks you about your presence you're in some of the political parties where we've been wrong, don't hear about you before you don't already answer them in the process of introducing yourself i go like make the members will follow you of your campaign team will follow you enter studio introduce themselves then we go return back to you that time you go now begin with the message where you won't give us i don't know whether they okay like that it's fine uh, it's make good. we meet them make we know who follow you come and who they be because uh for politics now people now be your biggest asset no be so no so mm. oh yeah oh, God, good morning uh, good morning everybody uh mm. my names are engineer buba galadima Mm. I happen to be the secretary of the board to of the trustees. Mi the microphone closer. The secretary of the board of trustees of the New Nigeria People's Party mm. (NNPP). Mm. Make one appreciate them. My name is Colonel Architect Jeff Onyejebu. Mm. I'm a senatorial candidate of New Nigerian People's Party. In Anambra South. Anambra South. Make one appreciate them. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Honorable Mukhtar Omar, contestant for House of Reps, hmm. Taroni Constituency, Kano State. Camera, make you hold on, hold on. We'll hold the microphone. Um, a larger pass. Uh, camera, make you now quickly show me who they introduce himself now. Because many people, as we talk, now over 2,000 people, they watch from outside the country and outside Abuja, apart from those where they for television uh, on our chan two channels in TSTV. Uh, for people where they're listening for radio, yes, they fit no see face, but they go hear voice. 
But when person they introduce himself, I won't make I see the face. Oh yeah, you go start again, sir. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Honorable Mukhtar Umar, mm. contestant for House of Reps, Kano Taroni Constituency. Mm. Under which Under party? NMPP. NMPP, na New Nigeria, Nigeria People's, People's party. party. Yeah. And now be the party where His Excellency Dr. Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso Day represent as the presidential candidate God's where willing, the studio today. The next president, and now the message now may want bring to us for the party. Next person, please. That's all. Okay, so we go return back to His Excellency, make it continue now. As soon as I don't hear him, or I don't hear what he be, how he take start, what he don't do, the journey where he don't go, he no be like people will be say they go talk, say they no get record. This one be say, he tell you how he start even from primary school. He tell you how he go secondary school. He tell you how he go polytechnic. He tell you how he go Congo, London, how many years he stay. Which schools where he go? And they return back. What did he do as he return back? How he run from House of Representatives until he become even governor, become senator. And the journey where he out from one political party to another, and even reason where he make him say, hey, this place where I've been come, things ain't aware, we go see solution. He no be like say, me and them, they think the same way. He move, he go to another place. So he reach where he there now. Will be the bus stop where they today will be new Nigerian People's Party. With a return back to His Excellency, make him now tell us waiting be the message, waiting be the manifesto, waiting this new Nigerian People's Political Party won't do, waiting make you say you won't be president. Because some people are here say they just won't be president, make you say they capture power. They no get anything where they plan, say nine they won't do for the people. For this program break the family, our own be say, tell us what thing you want to do for Nigerians. As God confirm and say, you could be the president and commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Over to you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. So after setting up all the political structures at all levels of our party, today we have very credible candidates in all the constituencies across the country. All the constituencies yes. across the country. Make we appreciate that. Close, yes. Out of, for example, 109 senators, we have 108. Even the remaining one were in court with INEC. Mm. And uh, we have all other positions uh, intact. And uh, I believe that is very important for a party to reach this feat within mm. a very short period of time. Mm. Now, on the issue of uh, what we have as a party, I'm happy to say the party has got a very good manifesto. And from our own end, as presidential candidate, we have... I believe the best blueprint because we looked at all the sectors, all the areas, mainly based on my personal experiences and the experiences of people around me. Mm. We formed a committee. We came up with a position on all the major issues that are affecting this country today. Mm. And uh, we, in the manifesto, were very much concerned about the security in the country. Mm. And coincidentally, I was governor for eight years in Kanu. I, as the chief security officer, mm. we know how we work together with various agencies, security agencies, right from the army, to the air force, to civil defense, to police, to even immigration and customs and everybody who was wearing uniform. Mm. We worked together peacefully and we had a lot of synergy. We worked as a family and at the end of the day, we achieved the results that we required mm. to the extent that uh, up till today, Kano is enjoying the foundation we put on security, mm. both as chief security officer of the state and of course, governor who has performed so well, 
who made so all I can comfortably say all our young men and women happy in terms of job opportunities, mm. in terms of going to schools both locally and internationally, and so on and so forth. Mm. So we looked at that in addition to being the Minister of Defense uh, in those years. And also we uh, used my experience as advisor to President on Darfur, mm. uh, Somalia. And uh, at that time, we were very strong in terms of security in this country. Mm. We were even taking our security for granted in the sense that uh, it wasn't an issue. And we had our military in Liberia. We had them in Sierra Leone. We had them in Darfur, in Sudan, uh, 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 that time. And I had opportunity to visit them. Those countries ranging from the ordinary people mm. to the leadership were so happy and proud mm. of our military to the extent that even when we finished the peacekeeping, they had to make special requests for our military to stay back, mm. especially in the government houses to ensure security. Mm. We were that good. But over the years, unfortunately, we lost uh, that, uh, what can I say, capacity. So uh, we looked at that security. It, we looked at the issue of education. Your, Your Excellency, before you leave uh, security, for people where they follow us for this program, the person where on a day here in voice, where we're going to interact with today for studio, we don't already start that interaction as Senator Rabiu Musa. Uh, so, na PhD FNSE, uh, he has served Nigeria meritoriously in various capacities. He don't serve before as civil servant, na former civil servant for 17 whole years for Kano State. He served as civil servant, and he ended up as principal water engineer in Kano State. And they don't become former deputy speaker. Uh, for the Federal House of Representatives in 1992. Now the person we sit down with us today, where we interact with, and it don't become also former member National Constitutional Conference 1994 to 1995. And it don't become former two times governor of Kanu State from 1999 to 2020, 2003, and then 2011 to 2015. Many of them know how can a state be. It gets states where we say in a very tough state when it comes to politics. And not be only politics, even governing the people. Kanu is one of the most important states where they for Nigeria. Every state they're important, but it gets some way senior orders. And for anybody to stand in as governor in the state, manage to lead that state in a way where the people talk, say this person do well. It means say that person sabi waiting if they do. Na person will not they hear in voice today. We know they bring them today, make we praise them, but na make una ask some question. Make una ask them, make una hear them. Waiting make them talk say you won't be president of Nigeria. If anything there where you think say we go, make them no supposed be. Tell them for this program today. But if something there where you know where you don't do well, tell them too. Because now when we tell people things for their face like this, he go encourage them to do more. And even other people where they're behind, where they come, he go become something where go look up to say, one day I go sit down for that whole seat for the program break at the family, Human Rights Radio and Television. And I go give account of my service, the thing where I don't do for my people. And nobody only saying stop for being governor two times for Kanu State. He don't become minister of defense. I've been one ask him when he has, I say, he no get many three uh, experience and exposure. How he come be say he become minister for defense, and the same time nothing bad happen. He try security, no be as he be. After that time, it means say this man no be ordinary person. He gets some level of commitment for him work. He gets some level of understanding for what he they do, and also. It don't become former representative of the Northwest on the board of Niger Delta Development Commission 2008 
to 2010. And it don't become also former presidential aspirant under APC in 2015. And then in, it don't also become former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria representing Kanu Central Zone 2015 to 2019 and former presidential aspirant under PDP in 2019. Now he is the national leader and presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, 2022. Make on appreciate him. Your Excellency, sir, take microphone. Answer me by microphone. If God confirm him, say you go become the president and commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You don't see the problems where Nigeria they go through. You they start, you talk about security. And now for security, Nadia, where I stop you before I put this small interjection. What thing you think say you go do for security? Make this problem become something where people go talk, say, mm, we don't breathe. We don't breathe fresh air. Because security no be small matter for Nigeria now. It reached so people, farmers, they know if go farm. Road where we they travel before, day, afternoon, and night, nobody they travel them again. Before, people they come from different parts of the world outside the country. You go tell them, made them fly from Lagos to Kano. They say, no, I won't run for road. Make I understand how the place be. Make I see the vegetation. Make I see the lifestyle of the people. Make I see their culture. Make I pass through villages, nook and crannies. Make I see landmarks. But now, it no be like that. So there's some places we hear say even bandits take over local government. Some places we hear say even farmers, they go pay money to bandits before they go go farm. Some places now where we say Christmas, they come. People no go fit, go home. Who they do that one? Celebrate Christmas for their homes. So they even inside Abuja as we day, it reach where people know they feel sleep, close their eyes. Thank God, say you safe, don't get experience. You don't become minister for defense. How you want to solve this problem? Or it will be the same story. It will be saying when some people enter, they talk, say by two weeks, they go and end them. After that one, you go begin here, blame upon blame. Over to you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. I want to assure you that uh, it not going to be the same story. If it were the same story, we would have stayed together with them. Mm, make an appreciate them. Um, you see, based on my personal experience in the security cycle, mm. we believe in the NNPP that the number of the military is far below what we require. Mm. And in fact, if you compare it to even the recommended ratio of the people versus the military, mm. we are far behind. Mm. And therefore, in our blueprint, which of course we'll give you at the end of this program, mm. we decided to multiply the number of the police in four years by four. By four. By four. Mm. From about 250 to about 1 million. Mm. So also the police, they are also about 230,000. Mm. We are going to make them to about uh, 1 million also. Mm. So um, the number is very important because we need a bigger number. Mm. And that's why you often hear that the military is being overstretched. Mm. Now, we'll improve the training and retraining of the military. Mm. We will improve the technology mm. to ensure that it's being used effectively. Mm. We are also going to carry 
everybody in this country, no South Muslim Christians, mm. everybody will be carried along. Mm. So that so no discrimination. No discrimination. Mm. Because the only way that people can have confidence in government, mm. and it is when you have that confidence in government, that at the end of the day, you will supply the mm. necessary information, mm. which we call intelligence. So if the citizens lose confidence in their government, they know they fit support their government, now you they talk so? That's exactly, and that is what is happening now. But one important thing where you mention as you they talk this one, you talk multiplying the number of police, the number of the military. Many times in this program, ordinary president don't talk about the welfare of the Nigerian police. We don't even talk about the army, the DSS, their own Phoebe say they're a little better. We don't talk say it complete as it's supposed to be. Because now people where they put their lives on the line every day for Nigerians. You know go believe I'm your excellency if you hear how much we commission of police they retire go home with. The problem no be say ordinary president look for how to turn the pocket the country money into their hand money. But these now officers will be say they stand in their positions refuse injustice. For example, a commission of police in a state, a hardened criminal or bandit may be held, caught. And they go tell and make he release them. He go say no, because it's against the law. He want the law to take his full course. And that man retire. The money where they take go home, he no give him fit repay in car. How much more? Keep one dog for in house. This is a commission of police. The junior officers, some, their pensions are 30 something thousand in this age. Some less than that. Some, their gratuity no past two point something million for person where don't serve for 30 something years. And when they talk about corruption, when they talk about making their morals high, when they talk about getting commitment from them for security, how you want to address that one? Now you get pension wuru wuru. This matter now, now about the pension wuru wuru when Nigerian police force they inside since. Nothing where we never do make government come out them from that pension wuru wuru. Give them better pension. We'll be saying when they look them, they go fit put in their very best in the interest of the country. Now one major problem, oh, you know, go fit overlook them, Your Excellency. How you go want to address this matter? Because we can't talk about security solution without this or corruption solution without this. Thank you very much, consultant. You raised so many issues. If I may talk about the pension, mm. I want to say that uh, before I went to Minister of Defense in 2003, mm. I'm sure many people will remember how retired military personnel were all over Abuja, sleeping on the roads, and so on and so forth. Oh, but immediately... It was on your time where that thing they happened. Oh, yes. Immediately, I was appointed. It's one of the first issues that I tackled. Mm. One, I gave them one month to move from Abuja, I mean from Lagos to Abuja. Mm. They came back to Abuja. And we sat down, we looked at all the issues related to pension. Mm. And at the end of the day, we took some necessary actions. And since then, it's very difficult to see anybody, any military personnel that is complaining about mm. pension today uh, in this country. Now you see the issue of pension and salaries it's not a matter of only the figures you are quoting. Mm. It also involves the value mm. of the Naira itself. Mm. Now, in a situation where Naira is becoming almost valueless from when I was going to UK, uh, uh, Naira was higher than the dollar mm. because one Naira is 0.8. No, one dollar was 0.85 of a Naira. That was about in one naira. We uh, it, you will be more. It's more than a dollar. It's more than a dollar. So about eighty cents or eighty-five cents. Point nine eight make, five. Make a one naira. One naira. Wow. So how we can find ourselves here? That's the issue. I think uh, you mentioned it. The issue of leadership. If the leadership has no capacity 
if the leadership has no integrity and if the leadership does not understand to put it mildly mm. then anything can happen mm. we have seen from those days when i left this country for the first time to the uk to date you can see that uh, at a stage uh, dollar was almost getting to 1 thousand naira mm. now i understand about 750 730 something like that so it's very unfortunate and that is why nigerians this time around must join hands with us mm. to make sure that uh, these two parties especially pdp and apc mm. eight years plus 16 years 24 years mm. is equal to what we are seeing today in this country and things must change if we continue maintaining the status quo mm. only god knows where i will find ourselves mm. and status quo in our opinion must stop in 20 Uh, 23 mm. and as the ordinary president mentioned or i don't know whether it was you mm. you see people have to take responsibility mm. we are very lucky now that nobody is coming to appoint president uh, either military or colonial masters all those things have gone mm. for good mm. now it is nigerians who will again Mm. have an opportunity in the next few months to elect their own president mm. now my advice has always been mm. that don't go for uh, ethnic mm. uh, religious sentiments and mm. so on mm. we are at the point whereby nigerians must stand mm. stand up to ensure mm. that they elect the best in terms of capacity mm. most people in this country and even elsewhere lack what you call capacity mm. they lack what we call integrity mm. and the issue of integrity in the area you mentioned the issue of corruption and so on and so forth as long as leaders will not stamp their feet to ensure that there is fairness to ensure that all loopholes where wastages or car are being blocked and so on at the end of the day we'll find ourselves in this sort of mess mm. i can tell you comfortably that when i was in kanu we took all these measures when i was doing my first term 1999 to 2003 2011 and 2015 mm. and that is why in kanu all what we have done Mm. in the area of education area mm. of health area of infrastructure mm. area of security and so on and so forth we never borrowed one naira from mm. any bank we never borrowed because there was enough money and there is still enough money in this country mm. any governor who says there is no money uh, refer him to me i will tell him there is money don't i know appreciate you see uh, people they give many excuses and one of that excuse where they always come every time na money no day money no day but in talk say in self no giving talk say money no day any governor way talk say money no day make una tell them say make them rich senator rabiu musa kwankwaso say go show am where money day and yes. uh this thing is sir you've been talk about parties you can mention apc pdp and all of that i make i tell you the resolve of nigerians today no be party again na individuals even though we know party get role to play but we are looking for individuals with capacity with character with integrity we know what thing they want do we get track record Before I interjected you've been talk about security but you they enter education now make you tell us some of the things where you don't do for education and what thing you plan to do make we hear Yes um you see what we did in Kano was simple we looked at education right from the primary uh, schools to secondary to tertiary level mm. in primary schools we decided to build thousands of classrooms mm. of course with toilets offices for the staff and so on and so forth 
And of course, we encouraged parents mm. to send their children to school by way of giving all the children two sets of uniform free of charge by giving them lunch. For the eight years I was governor in Kanu, we were given our school children uh, lunch. In primary uh, school in primary or school, in secondary? In primary school. In primary school. Yes. And of course, in secondary schools, uh, we decided to reboard most of the secondary schools. Mm. Of course, those who are in boarding schools were getting uh, three square meals uh, per day mm. uh, from government. And uh, we built thousands of classes in the primary schools, opened hundreds of primary schools, same thing with secondary schools. We opened hundreds of secondary schools, uh, including 44 technical schools. Mm. Each local government had at least one technical school mm. with boarding facilities, with classrooms, with laboratories, with workshops, with all the facilities. Mm. In fact, when I went to Kano in 2011, we had four technical schools. Mm. In but fact, you extended I, that to all the 44 local governments. Exactly. And the technical schools we built in each local government mm. was better than any of these four. And Who out of the four, before? I attended two myself. Mm. One was craft school I attended, one technical school. These are the two plus two others, mm. four. That's but weird. before I left, mm. we decided to build one technical school mm. per local government. Mm. The idea was to train and retrain our children in various trades, in various areas, to ensure that we have skilled labor, mm. not only for Kano, but for Nigeria and mm. even beyond. Michael, I now, appreciate them. Um, your, your, your Excellency, sir, you see... Now, if, I'm, if I may finish mm -hmm. this, just let me finish okay. it. Now, out of the hand, over 200 secondary schools we built, we also had what we call School for Islamic Studies, mm. specifically targeted at parents who wanted to send their children to al Majiri schools. Mm. So we had a law and still there that no child of Kano will go for any al uh, uh, outside, I mean begging mm. on the streets. Mm. So we built those School for Islamic Studies mm. in each of the local governments. Mm. And the idea of those schools uh, was to ensure that they cater for the entire local government mm. and therefore they are all boarding schools mm. so that people from far away from where the location of the school is Can could stay the school. there mm. and attend boarding schools so we had a comprehensive system and arrangement mm. to the extent that before i left kano we are mobilizing and looking for children to go to primary school. Mm. Not only that, in secondary schools, of course, we built all these technical schools, School for Islamic Studies, and of course, we had mega secondary schools mm. that would admit all our students. Mm. Now, I can tell you that at the time I was living in Kano, there was no child that has passed primary uh, examination mm. without getting a slot in either secondary school or in oh, technical, technical school college. and so on. And we also built two universities mm. for Kano, one in my first term, the other one in second term. Mm. In my first term in 2001, we built Kano University of Science and Technology. Mm. And in my second term, we built Northwest University. Mm. And we brought in some initiatives. One, we arranged what you call foreign sponsorship. Mm. This foreign sponsorship, we made it in such a way that it is purely 100% based on merit. And that was why we started with first class. Mm. During our time, anybody in Kano, not Kano indigenous, mm. Kano resident. But once you are residing once in you are Kano, residing you in must Kano, not be Kano indigenous. No, not Make indigenous. we appreciate them. We had people from the east, from the west, from the south, south, from all parts of northern Nigeria. Mm. So we sent in f my last four years, mm. we sent over 3,000 to 14 countries. 3,000? four years. Over 3,000. Wow. 
to 14 countries across the world. Mm. But uh, Your Excellency, I hope say when you send them, you know, you know, be like some of the states where we hear say they send people abroad, the children they are brought on, they stranded. Uh, uh, I never get information about that from Kano, but I won't make a hear from you directly. Now, I want to tell you, mm. not only we sent them to 14 countries, mm. all of them, it's only those I sent to Ukraine mm. that I did not visit. And you visited were, them? All of them. <laughs> and not only that, I had one-on-one -on -one with photograph with <laughs> all of them. Every, over 3,000 of them? Over 3,000 of them. Wow. So what, what I go other there motivation as a father, are we looking for? Mm. I sit down together with them, with the school authorities, and so on and so forth, to find mm. out the problem as a father, mm. and then immediately bring in solutions. Sometimes mm. they tell me problems in the university. Once we look at it, we take decision at that time, either to increase the allowances mm. or whatever. We, were, we, did, we did it. So, you know, like just sending them. Mm. And uh, I'm so happy some of the pilots we are talking about, mm. we sponsored 100 of them to Jordan. 100, many, 100 pilots? Of them. And they all graduated. That's why we have uh, many of them now. Mm. I'm happy we are getting some airlines now, especially from Kano, mm. even those who had no job, now they, are, they have just been employed mm. uh, to be their, their pilots. Mm. And uh, not only that, we realize there are, in addition to our universities in Kano, mm. we thought of encouraging federal universities. Mm. We selected four universities. One was Amadi Bella University. Mm. The other one is uh, Maiduguri University, Usman Danfordio University, mm. and Al Kalam University. These four universities, we built 300 bed hostels. In each of, of the charge, four in universities. Each of the, the universities, wow. free of charge. And we allowed them, gave them, just encouraged them to admit our students. Mm. And we selected another set of private universities. Mm. We uh, selected uh, Bells University, we sent 300 students. Ibnidia University, we sent 300 students. Mm. Crescent University, we sent 300, uh, 200 students. RT, we sent uh, uh, 25. Al Kalam, 412 students. Mm. And uh, I can tell you, during my last year in Kano, during my second term, mm. my own universities were even complaining because mm. either everybody has gone abroad or everybody was in the private universities mm. and they had few students to admit. Mm. In other words, we were looking for Kano residents who were interested in, in scholarship to apply. Wow. And all those who applied and those who are qualified, mm. we gave them sponsorship. And I can tell you that in this country, we have enough resources for all that. Mm. And as I told you, we didn't borrow any money to do that. We use the money mm. that we had from internally generated revenue to uh, plus the money that we get uh, from FAC, that's from federal government. Mm. So that is in addition to the infrastructure. Anybody who goes to Kano today would know that Kano is different, not only in northern Nigeria, mm. but across the country. Mm. And I can tell you, if you go to Kanu today and you remove all the uh, flyovers that we built, the underpasses that we built, mm. the dual dualized roads with street lights, with mm. drainages, with walkways, and so on, if you can remove them out of Kanu today, Kanu will go back to its days when it was just uh, an ancient uh, Your Excellency, uh, I was actually coming to that because uh, no nation develops well without infrastructure. Across the country, the infrastructure we get, is they in a state, very sorry state, very sorry state. That's why most of our roads have become dead traps. And Nigerians are very industrious people, people that work so hard that if you give them right infrastructure, you will see what they will produce out of wherever they are, in every corner where they be. If you check very well, even for places where government won't build houses, once you put road, put water, put electricity, 
the people will build their houses by themselves. I don't know what can be your plan about infrastructure. The state where infrastructure there for Nigeria now, as the president and commander in chief of the general of the uh, of Ni Federal Republic of Nigeria. You see, infrastructure facility are key to any government. Mm. To the extent that uh, leaders should not be see infrastructure just for their usage. Mm. If you are a president or a governor, you must make sure that you provide adequate job opportunities for those who are willing to work. Mm. That was why in Kano, we, especially in the second term, we selected to build three major cities. Mm. Konkwasia City, Amana City, and Bandrao City. Those cities, we build them at the cost of over 40 billion. Mm. And all that within locally, mm. within our resources. And the idea was, of course, to provide good accommodation for our team and young men and women, especially those who are sending uh, to universities both here and mm. abroad and those who are coming to settle uh, in Kano. Mm. But what was key at that time was almost everybody was busy. Mm. And it's one of the things that we used against insecurity. Mm. Idleness, joblessness, hopelessness, of course, push our young men and women into drugs, mm. push them into crimes, and so on and so forth. Mm. So while we are handling the issue of insecurity from the point of security agents, mm. we are also working around the clock to ensure job opportunities and security. Mm. We are also ensuring that uh, we provided them with uh, these opportunities to go to schools, to go to and get jobs. Mm. We provide a job for those who are selling building materials, those who are, of course, producing building materials, mm. those who are selling food, those laborers, painters, plumbers, everybody. Mm. In Kano, there was no idleness. Mm. In fact, uh, that time, everybody was busy. Mm. We mobilized them. And I can tell you from my experience mm. that Nigerians are good people. Mm. All what they need is direction, support, enlightenment, information, and mm. so on and so mm. forth. Mm. Everybody will raise up. Everybody will go and try and earn a, a living. Mm. But if there are no strong leadership, mm. uh, people will just be there. Even the good ones mm. will start thinking of evil, start mm. thinking of doing uh, things that are, are not good mm. for themselves and for, uh, for the uh, society. Mm. So what is important uh, is... Uh, in, in infrastructure, which is key. Mm. And that is why now we go around Nigeria mm. as much as possible on road. Oh, you go on road? On road. Just... Uh, Michael, I appreciate just, him. He may say... Just uh, yesterday, we came back from a trip that we spent five days. Mm. From here, we went to Lagos by air. My mm. vehicles were there. Mm. From Lagos Airport, we went straight to Ogun State. Mm. We went around Ogun, Shagamu, many other places, Bekuta, mm. within uh, Ogun State. And we slept there. We had discussion with the people mm. to hear the issues that are on the ground. So that mm. when we have opportunity, we know exactly the one what to do. Mm. From there, we moved to uh, Ocean State. Mm. We went around Ocean, we went to Ife, we went many other places in uh, Ocean State. Mm. And uh, we sat down, we talked to the people, they gave us what they think should be done for the state. Mm. From there, we moved to uh, Ekiti State. Mm. We went around Ekiti, we discussed with the people, and so on and so forth. Mm. And lastly, we went to Akure. We slept there also, all by road. Mm. So I can tell you now, from my bedroom, how the roads look like in the southwest. But I'm not surprised they are almost the same everywhere mm. uh, in this country. Mm -hmm. In fact, the general thinking in this part of the country was that uh, most of the government projects were in the south, mm. especially the southwest. Mm. But when I went there, I found nothing. It's a fair reflection of what we have here in this country. Mm. And the same thing was northern Nigeria. 
Today, as we sit down here, mm. I visited all the states in northern Nigeria, mm. and mainly by road, mm. and even places where I went by air, for example, from here to Adamawa. Mm. If I go to Adamawa, I will go to Mubi. Mm. I went to Mubi to see how they live, what they have, and we see the road from Yola to Mubi, for example, mm. and all the towns and villages on the road to see what is really happening there. Mm. So we have completely done with the north. Now we are in the in the south. Very soon we'll finish that. Mm. So it's just to have the feeling. Mm. You don't stay in the office I as know. president and people are telling you about the stories. Mm. Even you will see the names of the towns and villages. You can't even pronounce them. You don't know them. You have mm. never been there. Mm. So president or a governor, Mm. must be conversant with the people mm. and be conversant, of course, with the issues that mm. are on the ground. Mm. And we are so lucky, as I told you, mm. that Nigerians are very good people. What they actually want is guidance. Mm. And that is exactly what uh, we will do, whatever it takes mm. to mm. do uh, when we have the opportunity. Okay, Mike, we appreciate that. Uh, when I go give His Excellency water, make a drink, and uh, as he drink, before he drink, make you open up by himself, and he has said in the water, make noise well, well. Uh, they sure say uh, they never open up before. It don't move from insecurity to education to infrastructure. And uh, I want make I ask you, as we they talk about infrastructure, you tell me how you work out from place to place by yourself. This one, nobody say you sit down for house or office, send people, may them go bring you information. Now you, they go, make you get first-hand information about it. Because before, people, they think, say, oh, as government, where they now, they do more in the Western states in terms of infrastructure. But when you walk out by yourself, go there, you can't discover nobody even true. Say the thing where they bite for uh, north, if they bite for west, if they bite for east, if they bite for south. And you talk, say, on oh, I go give priority to Ram. But as you the worker, you go see, say, you go see what it look like industrialization when on I enter Ogun State. I don't know whether you see that kind of thing. Some small, small cottage industries will be like, say, then they produce different, different things, Your Excellency. You've been seeing something like that. You will take microphone, Your Excellency. When you go for Lagos, you talk, say, you fly, go Lagos, but na uh, kek, na leg, oh, no be keke. Na moto road you follow now come begin enter the other state. You how it be you you see some places where you pass will be like say some small small industries they work. Yes, um, we have seen some few industries, mm. but actually this country could do much more than that. Mm -hmm. You see, we in our blueprint. We mm. looked at issues that are militating against production mm. in this country, ranging from power. Power mm. is a big issue. Mm. Either it is not there or is partially there, mm. and in most cases, too expensive, and mm. so on and so mm. forth. Now, we looked at the power, and actually, we looked at all options mm. and sources of power, especially mm. green energy. Uh, uh, before uh, you talk that one, Your Excellency, you remember, say, Kanu, now one of the most industrialized states. Two, three places where we say, it be, they be like in the front line of industrialization in Nigeria before now. Lagos, Kanu, Aba. Kaduna. But all of these places, mm. Now, it be like saying a story where they be. The textile industries, where we've been taking they make mouth for Kano, they don't go completely. Almost everything where we they carry we are as clothes, we them put them. Jobs, where the youths were supposed to do. You talk and say Nigerian youth, no, they uh, lazy. We are exporting them. Sake of say, industrialization die completely. And as you talk, you hit them for nail. You say, major thing will cause I'm not electricity. How you want to solve this problem as the commander-in-chief? Because many people don't enter. They tell us stories. 
They talk how the next day electricity, in fact, we go to throw where. But we see different things. How waiting be your plan for this? Okay, thank you very much. Now for production, you need electricity. Uh, of course, for production, you need many other things that are very important. Raw materials, in most cases, mm. uh, we have them. Uh, the issue of taxation is also very important. Uh, we have looked at it. In fact, in our policy, in our manifesto, mm. we have decided to reduce the taxation of about 33% to about 25%. Mm. Because ours is not competitive. Many factories are relocating mm. to our uh, countries around us. We no give them and, good environment. Uh, we can't carry heavy tax. Heavy tax. Hmm. And we believe that with the 25%, even though it's less than 33, hmm. but we attract more companies to come in and people will be willing to pay. Hmm. Now, because it's too high, a lot of corruption and so on is coming in hmm. and that would uh, create a lot of problems. Hmm. Now, on the issue of electricity, you see, this country is blessed with so many things. Hmm. Now, uh, one, I want to say that... Uh, my PhD is in civil engineering and water mm. uh, area. So in Kano, we have 23 dams. Mm. When I was governor of Kano, we selected two major dams mm. to and installed uh, uh, turbines. Mm. In fact, uh, we decided because we, th we believed that it was not easy for any government, state government for that matter, uh, to produce that. So when we are going, we even left money about 43 million US dollars for mm. transmission and other things. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I think the government is still uh, on that. So we use various sources, the area of hydro, which is the water, mm. areas in, in, in uh, 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 where we have facility, for example, at Mambila, mm. our government will make sure that Day one, we start doing something about Mambila. Mm. There is the issue of solar. Mm. Now the technology is improving by the day mm. to the extent that we believe that some parts of this country can have uh, uh, energy from solar. Mm. We have other sources like coal and so on. Mm. Of course, we have the ones that we have, the thermal, Mm. that we mainly have today. Mm. So we look at we, we have decided to look at all the sources of uh, producing power mm. and of course the competitive advantage that each part of this country has. Mm. And uh, the one uh, we will make sure that uh, things uh, are started mm. so that within our time we are able to have uh, uh, power. Mm. Now, one thing that is very clear in that area and all other areas mm. is the issue of corruption. Mm. Unless president mm. or governor decides to keep his eyes or her eyes on what is happening, mm. we'll continue to have big problems. Not only in this country. You see, human nature, easily human mind can be corrupted. Mm. But that is why in civilized society, they use a lot of technology. They avoid as much as possible using cash mm. and so on and so forth to the extent that is very difficult mm. to even steal mm. under that circumstance. Your Excellency, it be like say you they collect this thing from my head because now corruption, now be the next question why I've been one ask you. I can't check. I remember saying when you be governor. We've been here different talks about even Babariga Bank for Kano. But we know here and for your own time. What thing you do will make that kind of... How many of you have done here Babariga Bank before? Huh? I think everybody... Go ahead. Everybody is aware of it here. Everybody is aware. Where I dollar so. they come out, they yes. enter inside Babariga. Yes. But that no happen for your own turn. Even though you they wear better Babariga, we know he had it. no happen. So how you take do a man, what thing you go do, make corruption become a thing of the past? Or make even reduce well well for Nigeria? Consultant, if you want to succeed as a leader, you have to be upright. Mm. 
you cannot say you are corrupt and you are coming to fight corruption mm. it cannot work make you appreciate them so you see many people see uh, politics or leadership as a way of making money mm. in fact that is why we always advise people that if you are a businessman stay there mm. if you are a politician aspiring to be governor president assembly member or whatever stay there mm. if you want to be a clergy an ulama or mm. traditional ruler mm. stay there mm. and that's the only way they can succeed and that's why when we see businessmen mm. as parents those who want money mm. money is their capital mm. when we see them imposing themselves into politics sometimes we laugh sometimes we cry mm. because when they go there the first thing they will do is to make themselves happy mm. and how do they make themselves happy is not by way of sending the children to schools mm. not by the way of providing infrastructure and so mm. on is a way of getting bigger capital mm. now that's why as much as possible i personally right from day one mm. told myself mm. that look you are a public servant stay there and that has been helping me mm. over the years the last 30 years i was in this game of politics mm. where you know if you don't know what your grandmother has done before mm. you are born join politics somebody mm. will come and tell and you and tell you and even tell you today what she, what she your excellency make i tell you even today so, uh, today as you day here we go open telephone line people go talk they go ask you questions if you even get anything where they know about you where no good they go talk am the one way good they go talk am and i make like you talk you good say when you hold public office make you keep yourself upright because if to say you no keep yourself upright you for no get confidence to come we know your records and we are happy with you just two questions where i go ask you i go open telephone line or maybe i go make them three ordinary president been talk say whether you don't think about the thing will happen for bakasi where they carry our part of our country without going through proper process hand over to another country with all the resources where god bless us there he say waiting you as president go do how you see him because if it no be only bakasio another one fit come go ahead your excellency thank you very much now um i want to say that uh we are so much worried and concerned about every square meter especially that is under the bandits mm. and other criminals today in nigeria mm. if you go to zamfara or mm. some parts of northwest mm. even some parts of uh, north central and northeast mm. you still have bandits criminals mm. occupying some land mm. in some villages and towns mm. uh, they are going to the extent of collecting taxes mm. from the villages and people from the towns mm. and so on and so forth mm. no commander in chief will be happy with that mm. and that is why we made it our uh, resolve mm. that day one will be happy to talk to anybody mm. locally anybody who has grievances will be able to talk to him or her mm. but at the end of the day as serious commander in chief will not allow anybody to occupy uh, our land mm. we are not even taking of assets you know today mm. uh, from the records we are just producing just over 1 million barrels per day mm. against the 2.2 million allocated by opec and that's exactly what we are producing and these are the areas that certainly will make money will get more money mm. will have security will pay them and so on mm. and all these areas especially in the northwest where we have this uh, uh, security crisis mm. uh, these are places where we have a lot of solid mineral mm. which is now undertaken now by uh, some nigerians and even foreigners mm. are just there we often hear from the locals that they saw uh, uh helicopters coming in and going of course 
we believe that uh, they are picking our assets mm. uh, out of the country. Mm. So if uh, the issue of uh, Bakasi is very unfortunate, but uh, at that time we were in the position really to inquire, mm. to find out what happened. Mm. Uh, we were told that there were some negotiations and so on at international level. Mm. We were told that there were documents that were being brought uh, from the United Nations, mm. uh, EU, and other places mm. to say at that time uh, that land belonged to uh, Cameroon. Mm. And uh, I knew Even though those negotiations were rushed in a very suspicious way. Yes, they that, were, uh, mm. that uh, of course, it was possible. And at the end of the day, the leadership at that time decided to hand over to uh, Cameroon. Mm. Now, all these things are things that can be opened at any given time mm. to find out the authenticity mm. and, uh, of course, importance, uh, uh, correctness mm. of that decision. Mm. Uh, it's open. Mm. But uh, our government, by the grace of God, will ensure peace and stability, mm. not only in Nigeria, but in all our neighbors. In countries. fact, what we intend to do with the military is to take over every square meter to be owned by Nigeria again. Mm. And then whatever we have, we use it in peacekeeping. Mm. That's what where we were. There is a lot of money, a lot of foreign uh, uh, currency there, and uh, many people are benefiting from that. Mm. We'll be very happy with this large number of military mm. to utilize them to bring peace even elsewhere in African continent. Mm. And uh, you could tell us about your take about fuel subsidy. Many people think, say, this is not part of the place where Nigerian pocket they leak. We don't get many stories about fuel subsidy. Even many governments don't come also. As in they come, they say they go remove subsidy. They no remove. We they hear billions of Naira paid every day in the name of subsidy. We we'll say if that money return back to Nigeria, we go fit to use them industrialize Nigeria. Because industrialization sometimes, not be only to put electricity. Some countries, they build industries, go bring people, say, come, stay, run them for free. Or run them for a time after you begin pay us. They do them because they know, say, it will create job, it will create revenue. Your Excellency, what be your take about fuel subsidy? Thank God you have been in government for some time, for a long time. At least you go understand them. What did they happen? And what will be your take for your government? Thank you very much, Consultant Ike. Let me say that um, oil subsidy has a lot of scam in it. Mm. A lot of scam, scam in scam. oil subsidy. Exactly. Uh, before you continue, I won't make I take permission from our regulators and our management today in a special edition of the program break at a family we go past our time because many people don't they call for telephone even when i never open the line make their feet in tarot with his excellency and all of these ones he just they answer us question he never tell us what be the contract the promise way they make as he become the commander in chief he go still get time to tell us that one but we want Make he answer some of these questions. Wait there for people mouth. When he answer and finish, we go open. Make people answer. Inside studio, they go call up. Then he go round up by telling us. I want to appreciate our management and our regulators, WBNBC, for giving us this time. Make you continue. A lot of scam. Nadia, you day, your excellency. Yes. For the oil subsidy matter. You see, our government will immediately looked at that area mm. of wastages. We have had so many stories about how monies are being stolen in the name of oil subsidy. Mm. So that wastage will be stopped. We don't know how much it is at this moment, but we know it's a huge percentage of the subsidy itself. Mm. Now, you see, governments that were coming, promising either to stop 
the subsidy mm. or even wondering or not to believe in that there was anything like subsidy we are not really prepared mm. because you have to prepare ground to remove whatever is remaining or whatever is real subsidy mm. you have to look at the situation you have to bring all the necessary palliatives or palliatives to ensure that the masses the people our voters have not suffered out of that action mm. so you see where we are now already if you look at the price of uh, uh items mm. ranging from food and other consumables and so on mm. you could see that uh, already uh, they are out of reach of many nigerians today and certainly removing the subsidy under this circumstance will only add to the pains mm. that nigerians are going through now mm. so it will be removed tactically without impacting negatively on the income of our people make we appreciate them okay your excellency finally agitation everywhere if you check you go see say ibila is in nigeria they are more divided now than the day that time where you be governor that time where you be minister of defense waiting be the cause of these agitations and whether you don't even notice them waiting be the plan where on a gate to see say if they reduced make we live in peace live together live in unity make the citizens confidence and trust for government co increase agitation agitation waiting you plan for them yes you see i believe all those have to do is lack of good leadership mm. once you have good leadership most of these issues would be resolved our government will open discussion with all nigerians our government will be represented uh, 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 by all our i mean various interests across the country and of course we will have uh use our listening ears to listen to so many people we have today people who are angry probably simply because nobody has listened to them mm. people some people are angry that they feel government has not been fair to them mm. or even their neighbors have not been fair to them and they don't know who to go and tell mm. so that uh, something can be done about that mm. to the extent that we have seen today bandits collecting money from uh, nigerians so all sorts of things are happening and that's why you have agitations mm. and these agitations most of them can be addressed by leadership on the table and that is the essence of democracy mm. democracy is very cumbersome it is not like a military rule mm. that you just give directives and uh, uh, stay at home you have to come out there talk to the people mm. convince them so the there has to be people are worried about may not be issues mm. because they are not being explained mm. that's why people are angry mm. so our people our government will ensure that everybody is carried along uh, of course all the things the responsibility of government itself will be discharged accordingly mm. we are talking of the peace itself we are talking of the economy we are talking of the infrastructure we are talking of so many things mm. and once you do that you find many people are so happy and you have very little to handle mm. of course we will continue to have criminals people who think uh, uh, others should not be in peace that's why you have the police you have courts you have this you have that mm. to checkmate all those issues mm. so that uh, nigerians can have peace again mm. okay for people we want to follow us we want to join inside this program make you talk to senator rabiu musa kwankwaso for we be the presidential candidate for 
uh, the sorry the name of the party, the New Nigerian People's Party, uh, NNPP, for this coming election 2023. You feel call us and the telephone number where you go feel call us if you are inside Nigeria. Na zero nine zero nine nine eight eight seven seven zero zero. If you day inside Nigeria, any part of Nigeria, the telephone number where you go call us to join for this program, make you talk as it be you, make you ask your question. Na zero nine zero nine nine eight eight seven seven zero zero. Here we get rule. You no go call, begin talk anyhow. As you get right to talk, na so another person get right. The thing where you go talk, you go talk am the way where be say when people hear am, they go no say you they responsible. And when you call, you go off your radio or tune them down well, well, or you waka come out from the radio or the television so that you no go bring feedback to us. If you call and you no obey this rule, I go put them off. I no go listen to you at all. And another number day will be for people in the diaspora, where they outside Nigeria. If you day inside Nigeria, call that number, I no go take them. I go cut them through, I go cut you through away. So the number for people where they for diaspora now plus two three four mm -hmm. eight one mm -hmm. eight eight mm -hmm. eight nine mm -hmm. one zero mm -hmm. one one. Mm -hmm. If you there for diaspora, where be outside Nigeria, the number where you go fit call, make you join the program break at a family for human rights radio and television 101.1 FM Abuja and make you take Vano with His Excellency, Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwa. So where be the president, uh, presidential candidate for the new Nigeria People's Party. Make you hear him, make you Vano with him, make you tell him. Na plus two three four mm -hmm. eight one mm -hmm. eight eight mm -hmm. eight nine mm -hmm. one zero mm -hmm. one one. Mm -hmm. We already get somebody for telephone. Good morning, Gi. Good morning, Gi. Consultant Ike. And now who the vano with us for the program break at the family? Uh, Porto Porto from France. Your Excellency Ambassador Porto Porto, the Brekete family ambassador for the whole France, the whole of France. Good morning, Dr. Rabiu Kwankwasu. In the hear you. I can hear Your you. Excellency. Yeah. Uh, use You're microphone welcome. so that you go hear you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank mm. you. For honoring this call on this divine sanctuary, Brekete family. Yeah. The place of truth, palace of truth, it shall be well with you. Amen. Amen. And we are praying, may the will of God be done. Amen. Amen. Now, it is better to discuss difficulties that we pretend we don't have. Mm. We have a lot of problems in our society. Mm. Like me talking to you now, I'm calling from France. Mm. Just because of you, we just came out just to come and talk, because the king, where they cry, they point hand somewhere. If your mama no dead there, your papa dead there. Mm. We have problems at home and mm. here. Mm. People don't represent us here well. Most of our embassies, no one is working 100% as he ought to be. Mm. That is why. The animal, where can we pick in? You know, they run far. Mm. The government is running far from the citizens. Mm. And we come to know that most politicians are rich and the government itself are poor. Mm. Please, you ought to address all these issues. Mm. You see, they said, always bear in mind that God without man is still God. Mm. But man without God is nothing. You have 
explained a lot of things there. Please, if God makes you to be there, carry every individual up. And do not make people around you to be people who be dictating for you. Because now my way in front, now they receive Kobo Kopan. Hmm? Because now you will go home. Uh -huh. You stay there as the president. Okay. And they come to tell you, say, uh, the people will be around you. We are enough, enough of that. We don't hear them tired. Hmm. Because now you will go home. Now him will go home accountable. Now so. So now him be like that. Now my way they front where they receive Koboko pass. Yes. Uh -huh. All what we need by the grace of God, we need the capacity, integrity, and character. Hmm. Nigeria is the. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It be like say the line don't cut. Uh, make we take all that calls now. Uh, make we hear waiting people won't tell. You know, go answer one by one. You go take, we take some, then we return back to you. Then you answer waiting they talk. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Kozeta Ike. Yes, now who the Vano with us for the program Break at a Family? Now who the Vano with you? Where are you the Vano from? Uh, from uh, Adi Galadimawa now. Galadimawa. <laughs> so I don't know whether you they hear. His Excellency, the presidential yes. candidate for I the hear, new... Mm. I hear what he discuss. Um, uh, I have a question for him. Mm -hmm. Make you My ask. question goes like this. He said he travels uh, across the northern uh, uh, states. Mm. You see, on his way going to Niger state, how you see about the road of uh, Niger state, the whole Niger state, before he entered the capital of Niger state? Mm. How you see the road? How he did him? Mm. As in Waka, it's not true road. How he did him? Okay, he don't hear him. No repeat, make we fit. And number, mm -hmm. and number two, how he go take do about the uh, um, uh, Agboro, we did for this country, we they disturb people around. Mm. And number four, Three, how he go do about the uh, what's it called, Babambola within the parks of people things uh, inside house. Mm. What what he go be in action mm -hmm. about them? Okay, thank you for those three questions. He don't note them down. Hello, good morning. Well, good morning, uh, I Yes, now who the vano with us for the program break the family? This is Tracy from New York. Tracy from New York, waiting the chuku for liver yes. come, me. Hello? Uh, I say, Vano, they Hello? go. Hello, Tracy. You they follow oh, us okay. up. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. You they follow us from New uh, York. Good morning, Your Excellency. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I just want to know, like, what is your number one priority um, in the first six months? Mm -hmm. If you do become the president mm -hmm. of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and my second question is, how do you intend to reunite Nigerians to become one? Mm -hmm. Setting aside our cultural differences and our religious background. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tracy, for that question. Very important question. Waiting be your num number one priority for the next six months. Once you become president, and how you want to take reunite Nigeria, make we become one, and uh, make we take a few more. We go return even inside studio. People will get questions. Barry Togo, you get question. Hello, good morning. Hello, sir. Mm. Good morning, sir. Consort Yes. Now, who the Vano with us for the program break the family? My name is Philip Gongu. I'm calling from Abuja. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, honestly, I think. Uh, his Excellency, who is there right now, I, I, the term uh, you people have not even given him a chance to even say half of what this man did when he was in Kano. Hmm. Actually, I wasn't there per se, but during this term, hmm. what I heard about this man, and after he left that place, when I traveled to Kano, what I saw about hmm. what this man did, hmm. honestly, is something that. These are the kind of people we need in power. Mm. But it's very unfortunate that any time people like this one comes out, mm. we discover that the Nigerians who are supposed to have been the people to vote in, 
support them inside will not even support them. Or along the line, something based on political or selfish reason, mm. they will discover that that opportunity will not be given to that person. Mm. But this man who is seated before you, I, I, I have never met him personally, and he doesn't even know whether I exist in life. Mm. But the truth of the matter, the way he does a lot of things, even mm. while he was a minister of defense, like he said, mm. this man truly has a lot. Mm. He has a lot to give mm. us in this country. Mm. I don't have anything to contribute, but what I no, want to say... No, hold on. Is, hold on. Yes, you, you're not going to go. Hold on. Eh? Unless if your credit don't finish, we go send you. Hold yes, on. Sir, hmm? You yes, see, sir. na new Nigeria, now we they look for. Now, this same thing where you talk, now make ordinary president create this platform, talk, say, people will be say they be like him. They get track record. But they don't see themselves in the bigger political parties. Make they come this platform. We be saying a platform where every ordinary Nigerian they connect. Make them get the opportunity to tell Nigerians yes. what thing they don't do and what thing they won't do. You now, we talk, say we never give them an opportunity to talk. We tell them, now you get the whole day. We don't already take permission from our regulators. Say we they stand. If he mean make we stay here till tomorrow, me, I go stay. They go bring me food, I go to chop them, I go to interview them. <laughs> so you, tell us some of those good things where you do. Because even we, we know, say you do some things in Kano. But now we say you know, know them, you know, follow for a campaign team, and you hear some things where you do. Tell us some of them will make you happy. Well, well, will be say if your own governor do them or he can't do them for Nigeria, you go happy. Yes, the issue of empowerment, you people might mention of it there. Hmm? Empowerment. Man, Wait, empowerment. That, yes, empowerment. I hope nobody the one where then they carry your card and keke they share. No, 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 sir. In fact, he has met poor people become somebody, so it's become people in the society. Mm. And most especially, the one that impressed me the most is the issue of the security, how he handled security mm -hmm. when he was the governor mm. in his own state. Mm. Then I remember my brother, he, he lives in Canada. Mm. Anything before you know, especially once there is anything he had about crisis, mm. the first point of his call, he doesn't want to know, like he said, whether this one is a Christian or is a Muslim. Mm. You will make sure that he sends security men to go there and make sure that everybody is well protected. Mm. To the extent that that time my brother was telling me that they even gave him a name, a Christian name that he is being biased. Mm. So you can see the kind of human being who has a heart. He is your represent. Your, he was giving himself as a Nigeria because mm. he has gone there to serve Nigerians. Mm. He doesn't want to know whether you are from there or from there. Mm. That's why when he was mentioning the issue of how he sent people outside the country, he doesn't want to know whether you are this and that. Mm. That was how he did it. So points on that security matter, honestly, I was very very impressed because you know, like you said it, what we have the most challenging issue that we have in our country today is the issue of security, mm. of which he has handled it very well. There, mm. I think if giving him the opportunity at the central, mm. in fact, he is going to do beyond that one. Look at mm. the man who has been in government. He said that Nigerian does not have any reason to borrow. Mm. He said he has enough. Even up to now, we say has enough. Anybody who said that Nigerian does not even have money, he should come to him. He can be able to tell him mm. what to do. That will tell you what we have even, we don't have any reason to borrow, just like ordinary person usually say. Mm. So with this one, I think this man is not, these are the materials we have. Mm. Compared to the ones that you've got, they have something to give to Nigeria. Mm. But the problem is that the opportunity may not be given to mm. them. Please, mm. let's pray like you all said. Mm. Let's pray that God should give us somebody. Mm. Let's pray. Where does the issue of this recession come from? Mm. If Nigeria does not have any reason to borrow, but where does the issue of this recession come from? Mm. Issue of apportioning blame. This one did not deserve, this one did not deserve. If this one did not deserve, since you are there, you have been given the opportunity, what stops you from doing it? Mm. Okay. Yes, I think that is where I Make we appreciate him. Okay. Uh, once Thank again, you, you talk, say your name now. My name is Philip Gongu, sir. I'm calling from Abuja. Okay. And as we yes. give you this opportunity to make you talk, I'm how it be you. Sir? As Break It a Family give you opportunity now make you talk a little okay. about what sir, you This know. is my first time. I've been listening to you people. I say, let me try by all means. Uh. I say, let me try by all means to get you. And very unfortunate for me. How I it be you? I am so happy. I am so happy. Thank you. Make an appreciate him.
uh, we still take telephone calls, make we hear from people. Hello, good morning. Hello. Mm. Now, who the Vano? I'm Charles, Charles by my name. Where you the Vano from? I the Vano from Africa. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, first time caller. Mm. Look at the family. Thank you very much. I have no quick, quick, they go. Um, so, um, trying to, I want to thank this uh, phone call, sir. Mm. Very much for his effort in coming. Mm. And in other things that he's doing, both in federal level, he's doing well. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you one question. Please ask quick. I want to ask you, in this issue of uh, this uh, country, Nigeria, some are agitating about that they want to go. Mm. And uh, on the other side of the Nigeria, issue of uh, Boko Haram or other things, mm. how will you handle the issue? Mm. That uh, in fact is, uh, even people are trying to go, they want to go from Nigeria. Mm. Then the uh, south, uh, northwest, and others. Mm. The issue of Boko Haram and other things. How okay. are we going to handle that issue of? I don't know, Tam. I don't know, Tam. Uh, we go come back. He go answer all of the questions. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Mm, good morning. Now, who the know with us for the program break at the family? Yes, uh, by the grace of God, my name is Usman from Russia, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Usman from Russia. I have another go. I greet you all, and I greet uh, the Northern Elder Man of Konkoso, Barkar as well, sir. Mm. Uh, Mr. I, Thank you. I don't know for the other sector, but on education, I can tell you Mr. Abu Konkoso is a legend. He's a giant from the northern Nigeria. We are very, very proud of people like him. Mekun, appreciate him. You can, you can send your evidence all over Europe, Asia, Arabs, and other countries. Mm. Currently, as we speak, he has thousands of students he's also there. Mm. And they are receiving beneficiary from his pocket. Mm. I don't know how he does it. It's God that is helping him. He's doing wonderfully well on educations. I have many colleagues here as a student union leader, many of them from Kano. If you ask who sponsor you, they say Konkoso. Mm. It's not even the state government from mm. the Kano. Mm. They identify Konkoso as a leader, a person who loves education and his love for youth is so for, uncomparable. For education, so you say he is a legend. Nigerian youth and the entire Nigerian youth. God bless you and bless your effort. But God. my question, sir. Okay. Uh, you have been traveling all over the world and have seen the infrastructure putting uh, to the life of the people, starting from the railways, the roads, most especially the electricity. You have been a governor in Kano State, and uh, the life of people there has been changed positively. But there is no way life can continue consistently without electricity. What can you do? To, to stop the if, if electric light supply in Nigeria generally. The major problem we have in Nigeria is electricity. Okay. It so don't take note. It don't take note on that one. Once you answer your question, no do too much analysis, make other people fit acts their own. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, the family. Good yes, morning. Now, who the Vano with us and where you the Vano from? My name is Al Haji Adamu Abdullahi. Do you know, uh, I'm calling from Abuja here. Okay, what can be your uh, question or comment? Yes, hmm. uh, I have a question. I want to congratulate uh, Al Haji for coming to the studio. Hmm. Then at the same time, I have a question and I have a, I want you to explain, please. Ask quickly. There was, a time, there was a time when he was governor, if I could remember vividly. Something happened to Northern Ant in. Uh, Anambra said when Peter Obi was the governor too, mm. and he is the one that intervened in that issue mm. that made peace between uh, Peter Obi and the people. People are talking about it, but we don't know the actual truth. Mm. Please, I want His Excellency to explain to Nigerians what actually happened that time. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. You know me. I'm. Thank you very much. He don't ask his own question also. Uh, we see, we go just take three more calls, then we go come back to studio. Uh, hello, good morning. 
Good morning, Professor Yes, now who there on the line with me? Good morning, Doctor Engineer Radio Concoso. And good morning, my fellow family members. Oh, Nanogo respond. Good morning, Gi. My name is Umar Shobida. Wakili Malafanupe. Wakili Malafanupe. I get them. Thank you very uh, much. I have uh, just one question for Dr. Radio Musa Konkoso. It's about abandoned federal government project. Mm. Uh, you can see the coming of uh, President Mahmoud Bari, he continued with a lot of projects that have been abandoned, mm. that have been tortured, and have been com which has been commenced by his predecessors. Mm. So, what you know, in the light of uh, saving uh, a lot for the federal government. There are so many projects that have been abandoned. I wish he would uh, consider uh, if by the special grace of Almighty Allah he becomes the president of Nigeria, he will look into that before he shows any other new projects and so on. Okay. Then secondly, there are assets that belong to the federal government which have been abandoned and unutilized, more especially landed property. Mm. Natural lands and so on. Mm. How best can he utilize such assets to the use and benefits of the common man? Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have for now. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Mekona appreciate him. Uh, just two more calls. We'll return back to studio. All right. Hello, good morning. Hello, consultant. Hi, good morning, sir. Good morning. Where did Vano from? Adivanu from Abuja, my name is Sidokoti. The wrong number you call, make you call the one where we give for people where they're inside Nigeria. Hello, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Yes, now who the Vano with us for the program Break It a Family? Yes, sir, it's Blessing Anthony from Kaduna State. From Kaduna State. You go yes, off the radio know, where you know, take the or move away that. from the radio, move away from the radio, or you offer make we hear you. Oh, okay. Ibila like says she don't switch off her line. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning. And who they've not with us for the program. My name is and where are you the Vano from? And they come from Mandova, Italy. From Mandova, Italy. Or you have another go. Good morning, you man. I'm just a father. Did they hear Where you? Good I morning. Good morning. Mm. So I ask your question quick, quick, or comment, quick. Okay. Okay, thank you. What I want to ask my son, as you say, so much about the corruption water. Mm. Is there any plan? To handle anybody has taken anything from Nigeria force. Mm. Like our the way they support our some of our industries for our things. Mm. Because if they may if he's become president, in the middle they don't go like that, as we you get us to bring them back to say, This is this is what we are looking for in Nigeria force. And are you there in charge? Mm. What are you going to do? Where is this? Where is that? Now corruption. I mean, when you look at how you see the corporate then, anybody who take anything away from from Nigerians, mm. all of the things they go out. For but now that thing makes the many corruption, now that people never know the fear. We it's we people. understand you. It talks say for people where they already commit, where we say Nigeria things property day for their hand. How you won't handle them? We go post some for telephone line. We go return make it answer some of these questions. Then we go come back begin take calls again. But Barrister, go waiting be the question where you've been get. Make we see whether I go too much for His Excellency. Your Excellency, sir. Mm. Uh, the question if we add Barrister, go and a few people here, it go too much for you. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, make we appreciate him. <laughs> he show capacity. He show say he they ready. Mm. He say he no think so. And as so as in the ask the questions, he they take note. It means say no one miss anyone. Barrister, go. Yes, good morning, consultant Ike. Mm. Good morning, Your Excellency. Mm. You're welcome to Break at the Family, the largest family in the whole world. Uh, my name is Ogotukwe Zugu Esquire. I'm a legal practitioner and an in-house lawyer to Human Rights Radio and Break at the Family. Your Excellency, sir, if you become the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
what are you going to do to eliminate poverty and unemployment mm. in Nigeria? Mm. Because uh, we see that many youth are there, out there doing nothing. Are you going to go into production so that we'll be exporting some things, like just like other countries, uh, importing things to Nigeria? And secondly, our health sector. Uh, what are you going to do so that people can equally come to Nigeria to do one or two things medically as we are going to India and so many other places? Like the young boy that the ordinary president sent to India, uh, Kinsley Boyne, that later died mm. after the money we spent and everything. As at that time, the compatibility machine they used to do a test when someone wants to donate kidney to another person mm. was not in Nigeria. Mm. I don't know whether they have it now. No. And it doesn't cost mm. anything. You have to send the sample to wh wh whichever country. Mm. They will now check whether they are compatible before they mm. will come back. Mm. And thirdly, the rule of law. Because uh, we notice that many people are above the law, just like the question the other person asks. What mm. are you going to do if you become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria so that there will be quality in this country, mm. not minding who is involved or who must have committed the offense or not? You know the rule of law is uh, equality before the law, and everybody must be, nobody should be above the law. What are you going to do in the judiciary so that no matter who you are, the judges will not look at your face? Once you, co you, you commit, you don't commit be that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barista Ogo. Even though you give him a expo for the first question where you ask, but we go see whether he go take your expo or he go you. take his own thing. <laughs> uh, good. And you also return them to law. Nobody only say some people they are above the law. Even some excellencies, then they act like say then they are above the law. And that's what we are saying. Not uh -huh. looking at you know the logo, the law logo. Uh, they mm. cover in face. Mm. That one shows say mm. even if now your mama. You know, mm. go look at them. Mm. So if if now maybe a governor of a state, if you are the president of the country or one of the senators or a minister mm. in your cabinet, it's okay. It's okay, uh, Barry uh, go. Uh, you don't take notes, Alaja. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Consultant Ike. Your Excellency, sir. My name is Amina <coughs> Ajukobi, <coughs> member of this uh, bracket, uh, beautiful family. My question goes like this, sir. What is your plan for the beggars on the street? Go to Lagos, go to Kwara, go to every, boy, uh, every state. And these beggars are in three categories to me. We have the women, we have the men, and we have the children. What is your plan to remove them from the street and to get, get them get something to do? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any other person inside the studio want to ask a question? Okay, give uh, uh, that the scaffold. Your name now? My name is Innocent Webike Oji. A.K.A. Daddy Scaffold. A.K.A. Team Leader. A.K.A. Continue. Chairman, <laughs> Managing Director, Suruge, the group of companies. Make one appreciate him. Good Daddy, morning, you Your mean? Excellency. Thank you. You are most welcome. You. I have just one or two questions to ask. And it borders on our mineral resources. The colonial masters had worked out a way to punish Nigerians. If you start from this Abuja, round the whole country, no state without mineral resources. But I can tell you for free that no con nobody, no Nigerians has access to those mineral resources. But foreigners are enjoying it and intimidating Nigerians, the indigenous, with our own security men and women. What are you going to do about that? Finally, our materials that people are taking out of this country without due process, thereby making things so difficult I'll, I'll name three things. Roofing sheet, the normal gauge has reduced to nothing. Iron rod has reduced the quality and quantity to nothing. And that of wood has equally reduced to nothing. Now, if you hear that a building collapse, 
don't be surprised. It's as a result of below, that is quality of the materials. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Okay. For all our followers, people, where they're listening to us, where one call in, make you just hold your peace. Make His Excellency answer these questions. We go return back again. We go open telephone line for more people to ask their questions. Make one no worry. Even if you the call now, I no go pick your call until you finish make you finish answering these ones where they for here. Uh Yankee. Yes. Now you go be the last person inside studio before his excellency will respond to these comments and questions. Your Excellency, you're welcome to Human Rights Radio. My name is Nayanki. So I want to ask this uh, Biafra that has been everywhere and um, to an extent is a, a disturb to the country. I don't know if you address how you handle it. And secondly, the Sambisa Forest that has become um, a no-go area. How will you handle it too, sir? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Make one appreciate, Hanky. Now we don't return. Make His Excellency Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso will be the presidential candidate for the New Nigeria People's Party. Uh, make he answer the questions where people don't ask them. Some self no be question na comments where people make. Make he respond to them. When he finish, we go come back again. We go open telephone lines. We go take more from people. Make we today na in day. And make people understand them. Make people know what he won't do as he talks, say he won't be president. If God confirm him by 2023. Your Excellency, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much, Consultant Ike. Uh, let me first of all thank the first caller um, uh, for his kind words. I don't think there was any question, but mm. uh, I'm so happy that uh, we have Nigerians who are very conversant with what we have done and even what we are doing. And uh, people like that actually make the make us to even believe that when we have opportunity again we should do even better things beautiful somebody called from galadima um especially he mentioned the issue of niger roads mm. niger state roads um you see these roads everywhere are bad it's very Difficult to remember where you can drive for 100 kilometers on a very good road. And uh, unfortunately, many people, especially contractors, are taking the opportunity of the weakness of government that they are given contract. They keep it with them almost forever. Every government that comes, they will ensure that they milk that government because they see it as their own share to ensure that uh, they steal from government. So we are aware that uh, all these roads are bad, especially Niger State is now linking far north and south, and most of the trailers and, of course, heavy-duty vehicles are going uh, through Niger State. And uh, it is our intention, really, to look at all these roads, not only in Niger or in northern Nigeria, but across the country, to look at the contracts that were being awarded. And in our manifesto, our intention is to look at all the contractors that are credible, bring as many as possible together, make a consortium that will produce a company that has capacity to do the best roads and we are ready to work with those companies to concession some roads and of course select points where we can put some toll gates and of course we'll ensure that it is something that will be very much acceptable to nigerians we have to bring arrangements whereby roads are done without going out of this country to borrow money or borrow locally to construct roads. 
Possibly the, by concessioning. The concessioning. Mm -hmm. So um, the situation that we are today is very disturbing. Mm. That so much has been sunk into these roads. But if you go out there, uh, they are not anything to write home about. Mm. Some of the roads were constructed a few kilometers, and they are put too many bumps. One of my friends who was in my car, when we were going, he noted that uh, he would have been better with potholes than, than this bumps. number of bumps. <laughs> Good road with so many bumps. Mm. And no work is done. You cannot move fast. And the disturbance, the inconveniences were so much that uh, uh, during our time, and that's what we, exactly what we did in Kano. Mm. In Kano, during my four years, we ensured that there was no, on the main road, uh, highways, there was no bumps. Mm. And markets were cleared from the main roads. Mm. And of course, even in some local governments, you find people having some religious activities on the roads and we sat down with all those concerned we agreed that roads must be open and clear all at roads. all times so that's what we did now you go around even in some villages you find villagers themselves are putting woods and rocks and stones and all sorts of things mm. to make sure that nobody moves and that's not the idea of uh, highways so we are very much uh, conversant with those issues and uh the issue of agboro and other uh people B B bambola that he mentioned all these issues are issues that must be uh addressed by the time you get uh you give people a very good job and they're happy with their job uh i believe that most of these things uh will fizzle out mm. Tracy from New York, um, my priority in six months, in fact, uh, based on my personal experience in government, we will select certain items, certain areas, and put maximum priorities. One is the issue of security. Mm. If there is no security, whatever you are going to do, you are sure it will fail. Mm. Ranging from education to infrastructure to economy, mm. everything will mm. collapse. So that is why uh, we will do whatever it takes to ensure that there is security in this country. And of course, the infrastructure itself is very important, including the uh, power that is badly needed uh, uh, in this country. And it's a big shame, really, to me, mm. that you go to almost everywhere uh, in a civilized society, you get electricity uh, uh, 24 hours and throughout the, the year. So that will be our target. We will use all what we can. And that's why I told you, because of our concern with electricity, that was why we decided to install uh, uh, turbines in Tiga Dam mm. and Chalawa Gorge Dam uh, in Kano State. Mm. And the idea of those dams was to supply electricity to our water supply uh, stations and, of course, use the remaining for street lights. In Kano at that time, we had over 100 generators within the city of Kano alone mm. uh, powering. At that time, we were uh, going by what experts told us, Kano was the most lighted city mm. in Nigeria, including Abuja and Lagos. Mm. And uh, it was very expensive. And that was why the idea of supplying from those two dams uh, became uh, necessary. And uh, the issue of uh, reunite, so the issue of security, the issue of infrastructure, and of course the issue of education. These are the things that are critical. That is not to say that we will not move on the issue of health, the issue of agriculture, and other sectors that are key uh, to uh, our, our society and, of course, our nation. We have uh, Mr. Philip. Um, you see, 
there is a lot of uh, concern. I think he ma he mentioned the issue of uh, selfishness, uh, which uh, we see all over. Mm. Many leaders, when they have opportunity, they just try to enrich themselves at the expense of other people or enrich people around them or enrich people who are from their own faith or from this, or their, 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 their own uh, ethnicity. I believe that is a very wrong thing to do. And uh, people should learn from other people's mistakes mm. or things that people have done and people are happy about it. I'm so happy to be here. We have had calls from Nigeria and even abroad. And most of those people, I have not heard anyone saying he's from Kano. Mm. Uh, uh, it's like... Uh, uh, even it's, Kano people go still call your excellency. No, Kano, no. What I'm saying is mm. the Kano people, I believe, unless if somebody wants to be mischievous, mm. I'm sure they will speak in this direction or even more under normal circumstances. Mm. So we will uh, continue to do uh, whatever we, 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 we can especially with the encouragement from the good people of this country uh, uh, in terms of what has been done. And uh, this will only encourage us to even, to even, to even do more. Mm. Now, Charles from Oka, he, the issue he mentioned about the Boko Haram, and I think he mentioned even the issue of IPOB. You see, Security, you have to tackle it from two sides. Mm. One is the issue of these security agents we are talking about, the military, the police, the SSS, and so on and so forth. But the other one is, of course, security of jobs, security of education, security of food, income. security of income. Mm. So all these things put together, if you run them, definitely many of these things uh, will go. Uh, and of course, our government will be open for discussion uh, with even IPOB, with even uh, Boko Haram, with even other people who believe that uh, uh, things uh, they are being wronged or somebody was not fair to them or some people who are not being fair to them. We put everything on the table. And at the end of the day, I'm sure many of them will see reason to come and work together with all other Nigerians. Mm. Along the line, if somebody says, okay, um, there was no school in their place, or he could not get a job, or the judges, or the police, or the SSS, or the, anybody has done this to that, now he's given us a way of how to correct. Your Excellency, to the microphone, to the microphone. Yes. Uh -huh. So that will be an opportunity to correct whatever we are able to get from the people who mm. believe that they are being uh, uh, offended. Mm. Now, Usman also uh, mentioned the issue of electricity. Uh, we have handled the issue of electricity. We will do whatever it takes using all sources that we have. We have been blessed in this country to have it so that Nigerians will have adequate electricity at reasonable cost uh, for industries, for residential and commercial use uh, in this country. It is doable. We are going to do it. We will get whatever way of financing. We believe that we will get money uh, in this country to do many things. But of course, there are areas that will require our friends, our partners to come and work together with us. I believe electricity is one of them. And uh, uh, there are many countries based on my present contact and uh, earlier exposure that people are ready to come and work together with us mm -hmm. for mutual uh, benefit. Um, the issue Alaji Adamu mentioned about uh, my intervention in Anambra and other states. Mm. You see, I made it a point, uh, decided that wherever I see injustice, I should try and chip in and mm. do whatever I can. Over the years, we had many crises uh, in this part of the country, that's in the north. Uh, we had even more crises that uh, intervened uh, in the southern uh, part of the country. One of them was the issue of a governor who 
said, uh, you know, um, many buses were arrested. And uh, I think there was uh, this idea of identity cards and so on. Mm. Some of them didn't even know why they were arrested and so on and so forth. And when I heard about that, as usual, we had to take action. Mm. And uh, it was a little political threats and so on. And we had to save the situation. We brought them to government house in Kano. They stayed there. We took care of their health. Uh, we gave them some clothing, gave them some capital, appealed to them to go and start uh, businesses mm. uh, because they are not only from Kano, it's across northern Nigeria. And uh, they are very happy. And uh, even now, people keep on making reference to that. But I was doing it uh, uh, mainly not because of politics, because, you see, in a country like ours, we always need elders and leaders mm. who will intervene on behalf of the weak. And you mentioned Amin Kano. Amin Kano, blessed memory, told us that our philosophy has to do with mainly with the needy, mm. the women, the children, the very old, the poor, that's we call them in Hausa, Talakawas, mm. and so on and so forth. Because these are area of concentration. Mm. This is an area that we take very seriously. That is not to say that we'll abandon other people. But uh, if you have 1,000 children, if one or two is sick, I think you should pay more attention to that one. Others are busy taking care of themselves. But we also believe that there is need to empower everybody. Because empowering, let's say, the rich in many ways, will help really in what some economists call trickle system, even mm. though it doesn't work here. Mm. Here, many people have so much. They are there in the ceiling. Downstairs, people are dry and have nothing. So um, I'm so happy with the intervention in the southern, uh, east, uh, uh, eastern part of the country. And of course, uh, all what we have done uh, in northern Nigeria, because I think I should make it clear Mm. It's not only uh, in the, in, the Kano in, in Kano or in, 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 in the east or in the mm. south that mm. we intervene. And recently I was in the OB, I mean the Oni of Ife's uh, uh, palace. Mm. The first thing some two people, Mosina in his palace, came to tell me was that when they had Ife crisis some years ago, mm. uh, to do the tension, we told them the Ario community there, they shouldn't you know, go and retaliate. If they like, they can go to court, and court will look at the situation, and so on and so forth. They are very happy about that. They took the matter to court, and uh, up till now, the matter was in the court. When I went to the palace before the Oni came, two gentlemen, the most senior people in the palace, appealed to me to talk to them, because they say they are not removing the case from the court mm. until I, 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 I tell them. So even the Oni, when he came, he raised the same issue. And from there, I went to the Ario community, I pleaded with them that in the interest of peace, especially at that high level, I worried about the court case. I pleaded with them that they should withdraw. And they gave me the award that they would withdraw the case uh, immediately. So we have many cases uh, in the eastern part of the country, the western part of the country, even in the south-south, and even in northern Nigeria. So you see, all what we do, what, what I believe somebody has to do, is to make sure that there is no escalation of crisis. Whoever mm. is wrong or right is not the issue. The issue is something has happened or it was happening. Somebody has to stop it. Somebody has to take action. And then later, when the tempers are cooled down, uh, other things uh, can, can, can follow. Mm. Now, I mean, I talked about uh, our plan for the week that the beggars... Uh, children, uh, women, and so on that are seen all over the country. Now, you see, during my time in Kano, we had a law on the ground that nobody should be outside their begging. Mm. But before we did that, we took census of all everybody who was incapacitated. Mm. Group one are people who cannot do anything. Those ones, our state government and local government were giving them allowances every month in Kano. Mm. 
Mm. We get uh, the lepers, the uh, the blind, the um, um, and all other people who have disabilities. We created uh, like Sariki traditional rulers to even at that level take care of them, try and get the figures and so on and so forth. We bought vehicles for them and gave them allowances on on monthly basis. Mm. Now the other group of uh, these beggars is are those who have uh, disability but they can do something. Mm. Their legs are bad but they have their hands, they can use them for something, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. We asked them whatever they, what they thought they would do, and we gave them capital free of that. charge in Kano. Michael, I appreciate them. And this, the other group is the group that uh, they just don't have. Mm -hmm. They are y very young, some, some middle-aged, some very old. We looked at them, we asked them what sort of business they want to do, we, we empowered them also, and at the end of the day, we brought our leaders, not only in Kano, but across northern Nigeria, the elders, the traditional rulers, the ulama, clergy, mm. and came and uh, officially declare that we did not want to see anybody because everybody has been taken care of. Yes. And I can assure you, once we did that in Kano, our streets were completely clean and we sent the others to schools those that we can give jobs we gave them we had people who were taking drugs and so on in 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 motor parks mm. in, in some other points uh, uh hide out all of them were fished out we established 26 institutes one of those 26 institutes was what we call Reformatory Institute in Kiru local government. Mm. And what we did was that anybody who was taking drugs, government took the responsibility to take them to this reformatory. We involved uh, consultants who are specialists in that area. We brought in psychologists. We brought in clergy and ulama. We brought, brought in everybody involved the family. And they stayed there for three months. Within the three months, we'll talk to the people concerned. At the end of the day, some will say they are just finishing secondary when they started. Some will say they are in the university or they finished this school and so on. And we gave them free scholarship, those who wanted to go to schools. Those who had issues uh, uh, of going to school or they have finished, all of them, 100% who attended those schools, were given automatic uh, jobs mm. in Kano. In fact, we have special uh, institutes like uh, 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 where we are training them what you call security uh, institute. We have a, uh, a corporate security institute. Those ones, we noted that all our primary, secondary schools, tertiary institutions, government houses, and so on, require security. Mm. At that time, Boko Haram was at speak. So anybody with secondary school certificate, not minding the grade, we go and train them for three months on security issues. Mm. Of course, we link them up with SSS, we give them cards and so on. Mm. They are working for everybody in the, in the state. And we post them to primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions and all other places where we had uh, government uh, uh, facilities. So we clear the streets of people, young men with drugs. Mm. Unfortunately, today, Every state you go, it's a huge crisis. And nobody is talking about it. These drugs. In Kano, before we went to Kano, Kano was the hub, was the headquarters of drugs in Nigeria. Mm. But within our four years, we cleared it. Nobody in this country who is into selling drugs mm. will be happy to go to Kano. Because one, if we catch you, no matter good or bad the vehicle is, we pack them and burn them together. Mm. We burn Billions of Naira drugs. In fact, even that attracted some issues from some other countries. Mm. So many countries were manufacturing fake drugs, mm. bringing into this country uh, 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 counterfeit drugs, expired drugs, and so on. Now, today, in one of our neighbors, we were told that if you go to the market, people are selling capsules mm. and other drugs like beans, mm. you know, in, in a pan. Uh-uh. 
in the market open as if na beans in a beans or, or any grain <laughs> that's how they sell it and people don't care and that's why if you go out those of us who are going for campaign mm. if you look at the young men and women uh, eyes very scary mm. they are ready to do anything for money to go and buy drugs mm. they are not even talking of food so government has to do something and this is the time mm. government to start doing something mm. otherwise the whole thing will collapse on us most of these criminal things are being done under the influence of drugs. Mm. Government has to do whatever. It can. In fact, we formed committees. So you mean say if you fit Duam in Kano, with all the things will happen for Kano, you go fit Duam for Nigeria. Of course. Uh, that's because what I'm even saying. from why I where I be no one interrupt you now make you be say the questions where they ask, you answer all of them. But it gets some things where you talk where sweet my belly well well. When you begin talk about how you dealt with Abuero, Alamadris, and others, you know talk say and beggar say you just go clear them for road. You say no. First, provisions we take care to understand who they be, waiting be their categories, their problems, how they be, waiting we go do to address each person, each group problem, and as we address their problems, now we put laws say if we see you for road, you don't enter. We say. That's exactly what uh, happened, and I believe uh, that is even doable uh, in this country. Mm. These boys and even girls that we see on the streets mm. taking drugs need help. Mm. Government must deal with drug barrels mm. that are selling, importing, mm. manufacturing all these drugs. Mm. In Kano, we close so many factories that we have producing this, uh, this calf syrup mm. that people are taking and so on. Mm. Benelin, we closed so many companies for months, and uh, many of them, after I left Kano, were friends up till now, because mm. they believe that I did the right thing. Mm. So um, government must be up and doing. Mm. You see, what we did also was to put committees under the leadership of uh, 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 NAFDAQ mm. and the NDLE. Mm. We had police, we had SSS, we had uh, representatives of the uh, Emirate Council, mm. they are the ones going around. Anybody they see either selling drugs mm. or taking drugs, mm. they'll be taken to the reformatory uh, thing. Mm. And once they come back, nobody will go back home mm. empty handed. Some oh, will be. Oh, you, you, you know, go just stop for it. None, me. zero. None of them mm. went back with nothing. Mm. In fact, anytime they are graduating, I take time to go there and sit down. Mm and see them parading, doing all sorts of things. One story was that uh, mm. somebody was there, and when he saw together with the wife, that the mother of the child, they are all crying. Mm. They were brought to me, and the story was that young man who was leading the parade mm. was so notorious mm. that the father was so afraid of his home Mm. Any time he was going home, was like he was going hell. Mm. Now his son is a good human being. Reformed. In fact, he was reformed in and charge, clean. in charge of the parade. Mm. So I think these are the sort of things that we that we require uh, in this country. Now the issue, aka um, the issue of uh, mineral sources. Uh, you see, in a country where things are just thrown out there. Our oil from 2.2 .2 million barrels per day now, we are producing about 1 million. I know we say only 1 it's million. It's not like that's we what we said in the tea farm. Tea farm. If I probably are producing more than that, mm. but people are taking them away. The same thing with the mineral, soil minerals. Mm. Some people just came. You cannot play and this game for Anywhere this program, in the world. we talk and say you know they possible to tea for you when government had no them because no be gallon then they take carry them. Mm. Now sheep will be say one sheep, it go pass like one hundred times this studio where you there, your excellency, mm. and no be say they fly like aeroplane. No, and no be say na one day, one minute, two minutes, one hour, then they take film. It they stay days. So now make people talk say. All you wear than the thief. You know they possible say they go thief and say government hand no day. Even the mineral resources where they ask you now, where you they try to explain your excellency, 
some of the places where then they drill, where then they do mining, they collect our mineral resources. Some na Chinese companies. We yeah, believe say government no. Yes. So Naomi, they ask you say, what thing you go do make this thing? Now you end? see that is why in the military we are going to have coastal guards. Hmm. We are going to have border guards. Hmm. We are going to have forest guards. Hmm. And I think that would answer some of the questions somebody asked about some piece of forest mm. and other difficult places. All those guys, it is there in our blueprint mm. that we have specific for borders, even when we have thousands of kilometers mm. as border in this uh, country, but we are strong enough, we are rich enough to ensure that our, our borders are made as watertight as possible. Mm. We must not allow our borders to be this forest. Mm. People are bringing arms on camels. People are bringing them on vehicles. Some are bringing them through the, the, the ports and so on and so forth. Mm. That got to stop. And you see, most of the issues that we have today in this country is an issue of punishment and, of course, reward. Mm. People are doing whatever they want. Nobody is. Ten people are killed. hundred are killed. Nobody says, okay, why, who, who, is there anybody who didn't do your, his job? Your Excellency, while I agree with you, not be only that also, there is issue of putting wrong peg, round peg on square holes, and square pegs on round holes. Take, for example, people, they complain about Nigerian customs. The person where they carry, make it become the Comptroller General, now retired colonel. Nobody say it be custom. When people... You, you don't work as civil servant. Career civil servant, they do everything because he aspire say one day he go get opportunity to lead the place. And you work in a place, you be custom officer, you work, you try to maintain good record, learn your work, make you do your work well. He reach when he go be say, that thing where you don't learn for 30 years, you won't make you demonstrate and they go bring somebody who will be retired police officer. We never get any business with custom, except if it import things. Bring somebody will be Yambanga, or they bring somebody from uh, um, uh, civil defense. Retired, say make it be custom officer, custom uh, controller general. How you go expect better result from there? I think uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, we need to put square pegs in square holes. Once we decide to do anything different, the outcome will be what we are seeing today. And there must be discipline in whatever mm. we are doing. I hear and say, even nobody don't ask you that question, I go ask you. I hear say many, when they enter, now their brothers, their sisters, people from the same church, where then they go, where be Christians, people from the same mosque, where then they go, if they be Muslims, People from the same family, the same ethnicity, now them then they put in all the places. When they don't put them in places where they think say they're important to them, the one where they remain, they feel live for anybody. And when these people misbehave, they know they feel ask them questions. You see, even that one is better than what is happening now. Now the offers are in the market for sale. Huh? Oh yes. Offer for waiting, wait, make I understand. Make una no clap, I beg. Offer for waiting. For all that you said. For positions to and serve Nigeria, yes. then they sell them. Sell them. So if I won't be minister, if I get money, I go pay, get them. No. You see, the situation is people are being allocated from National Assembly, hmm. uh, ministers, chief executives, hmm. to the extent that... Uh, if I they buy them, how I go, how even I know to go give recover it, now first? It is even better you give it to your son or somebody, but it's in the market Hi. to buy. So the situation is, I never uh, hear this one before. is, is, is very unfortunate. Hmm. And uh, I believe government has to investigate some of these things and take action if at all uh, they want things to get better your excellency so, when um, i say i never hear i just the talk make i hear more the thing where you talk not true here 
for break at a family. Record day. Record. Even voice conversation where then they begin. For chief executive of uh, Federal Line Line Revenue. For example. Chief executive of NCC. For example, Naima Etoko. Because when time comes, we go talk the areas. NMPC. No, be only this once. Even ministerial position. Record day. I Thank don't you. know say you go get courage to talk I'm your excellency. No, I have to talk about them. Um if I don't do it, who else will do? Mm. Um well, I no go appreciate them. You see the major problem with government na will power, political power, political uh, within will. Political will. They go know what in they happen, but because they no get that political will, maybe it consign their person, it consign their friend, it consign their brother or their sister or their interest. Now I can tell you here, you see, we have taken note of not only selling this sort of uh, papers, we have noted that even before now, people have to pay officially some money. For example for Wayek, mm. for uh, NAPTI, all sorts of uh, mm. uh, examinations, mm. NECO and so on. That an exam registration now, uh, or money for... Yes, Expo. now in our blueprint mm. is free of charge. Huh? Jump form mm. is for no child, Nigerian child will pay any money for that. To take jump? Yes, because of the sons and daughters of the poor. Hmm. We will not allow anybody to be restricted in his educational movement mm. because of the status mm. of his family. Mm. So that's why we decided to scrap that. That's exactly what we did mm. in Kano. And the same thing with other schools like going to uh, 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 schools, security schools, even NDA, you have to spend a lot of money to buy form and mm. so on and so forth. Mm. All those things will will not allow government to take mm. responsibility. And we are doing it simply because we know so many be people are being excluded. Mm. So many families are not given the opportunity, mm. even when their sons and daughters mm. are qualified mm. to get that opportunity. Mm. So I can tell you the issue of this punishment People are doing whatever they want. Mm. A good government is, look, in Kano, we had what we call suggestion boxes. Mm. Suggestion boxes. And these boxes were in all the local government headquarters. They are all in the traditional rulers' houses. They were all in government offices. Mm. What we wanted you to do, anybody was to take paper like this. Right, you don't have to write your name. Mm. You don't have to write your address or so telephone. So we don't need to know the person. We don't person. need to know the person. Make it just go and drop it. Talk not true. If you tell us that at number so 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 so, mm. you saw funny movements, then we call the SSS mm. and send it to them. Go and check our report quickly. What is happening there? They saw movements around three, four, two o'clock a.m. in the morning. Mm. Through that, we are able to checkmate so many. Insecurity issues thank, are in Kano. Thank you. If you tell us that Mr. So 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 mm. has stolen money, or Mr. So 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 so, a civil servant was was uh, collected two salaries, he retired mm. and collected the money from pension and collected money from salary. Mm. Immediately, we take action to the extent that everybody was reporting. Mm. If you retire this month, the following month you will take our pension. Mm. And if they made mistake of allowing you or paying you quickly, not only you will pay you right to the governor mm. because you are afraid that if governor should know, you will run into crisis. Mm. So through the suggestion boxes in Kano, you are able we to... are able to do so much, mm. and everybody was watching his shoulders. Mm. And that's how we succeed. Now you have all this information. I have it. Mm. Government, somebody in government must have been listening to this. But you won't hear anything again. They will mm. continue to sell. Mm. And you see human nature, 
So Did when you realize, action no day, no, no, nothing will happen. They'll continue. Mm. Your Excellency, before you go, I know say about three more questions remain. One uh, from Tracy, where say, how t what do you want to do? Make you take reunite Nigeria, make this no, kind I'm coming of there, unless if you no want day. me to skip others. And then, and then also, Barrister Ogo talk about the rule of law and the other they things. They are all here. Uh -huh. And the other person talk about uh, where be Yankee. They uh, talk about uh, the kind groups, insecurity, where they cause terror to people from different parts of the country. Mm. Uh, that one day. But before you go answer them, I go also want to make I assure people because telephone line they ring ever since where you start to the talk. I tell them say make them calm down. Opportunity go come. We have to answer make this. you just answer this one. We have to answer I this. I go before. come back again to them. People with okay. for telephone line go talk their own. Now, um Wakili talked about uh, abandoned uh, federal government colleges mm. and, of course, there are many other things. And properties. And properties that have been abandoned. You see, what we did in Kano was to form a committee. Mm. Uh, abandoned uh, projects uh, committee, completion committees. Mm. Your, Mike, those Mike, com you those committee, that uh, committee went around and itemize all the buildings that were being abandoned in Kano, mm. ranging from secondary schools, tertiary institutions, uh, 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 state secretariat, and so on, uh, libraries. So our first place of call was to complete those projects. Mm. And that's exactly what we wrote there. Mm. There is no point in starting opening a foundation mm. while there is a building across the road mm. that is almost completed you need to put little money and you put that one mm. to use so we are going to complete all these projects and it is also in that blueprint that uh, as as was requesting that government should concentrate on expanding improving and renovating uh, schools uh, 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 universities, that's exactly our position. Mm. And that's exactly what we did in Kano. Mm. To the extent that our branch, the ASU branch in Kano, when I was governor, we are not going on strike even when the national called for strike. They will go and take permission politely. They're not going on strike They're not going, throughout they're not your They're not going. They'll take permission and stay. Mm. Because all these things are things that government should do. And nobody and say, no be say, Your Excellency, make I ask you, nobody say you threaten them. You know, sir, as You can't threaten again. Asu. Uh, they are being threatened now. Have they gone back? So it means, say, you do and things what did I go back? press them, where make no. them stay. You see, we are all Nigerians. Mm. What government needs to do is to build confidence. Mm. If there is confidence that the governor, the family of governor, the friends of governor, the state executive of governor, everybody mm. is doing the right thing. Mm. And people are seeing results. Mm. Schools, primary schools are being renovated, are being improved with books, with furniture, with teachers. Of course, these are the places where these workers are sending their children to. Mm. So you don't have to worry with that one. Mm. Your child is being sent to India, to the United States, to Britain, to this and that. Why do you have to worry yourself? So... You see, all these things have to do with confidence that government is able to build mm. among the uh, population. So, um, abundant projects definitely will be compl will be completed, and that's exactly what uh, we have done. The gentleman from Italy uh, about corruption. Mm. You see, what is key? And that's what we did in Kano. Day one. When I came, I decided to draw a line mm. and move forward. That is not to say corrupt cases will not cross the line themselves. Mm. They will come and cross the line. And we took all the time, and everybody knew I left government for eight years. The governor that came did everything under the sun to rubbish me. Was so many committees of investigation, in fact, Judicial Commission of Inquiry produced white paper, believing that I would take 10 years mm. because of the white paper. Mm. And that's not what the Constitution says. And just there was just nothing. I was Minister of Defense then, 
Mm. I told Obasan Joe that Kano is doing white paper. Please why it comes to read it. Mm. I'm ready to answer any question. If there is one thing, mm. I will resign and go and defend myself. Mm. Thank you. Appreciate them. And one day finish, coincidentally, one day Obasan Joe called me mm. and said you should come tomorrow. Are you in Abuja? Yes, sir. Come by 8 a.m. I went to 8 a.m. I met the president, the, the governor there. I didn't know it was him. When I had in the night, I was calling my permanent secretary and directors to see if there was anything that I needed to see president. He was calling me by 8 a.m. Mm. I went there. I saw him. When we went there, the white paper was his president. Now the white paper. They there the white it. paper. Me and him. We Thank went God, to... no be black paper. <laughs> so <laughs> we went there. The mm. chief of staff, uh, General Abdullahi, was there. When he read the issue of white paper, I said, sir, I told you, read it. I know you are very good at reading. If there is one item, because you see, you can't steal alone in government. You can only go a robber to go and break somewhere and take money. Mm. It has to go through so processes. Mm. So he read it. I said, there was just nothing. And of course, there is nothing. If there is anything today, somebody will bring it. Mm. I'm contesting to be president. Mm. And you know politics. So there was just nothing. So you see, you need to be upright. At it, and that's the problem of people. And that's why many people are finding it difficult today to mm. contest any election. Because it's diff very difficult to get credible candidates at all levels. Very difficult. For you to be a good candidate, mm. you have to deny yourself too many things. You have to be different. Mm. If you are not different, then why are you? Why is that not the other person? Mm. You have to deny yourself and family so many things. Mm. To the extent people will believe you are different. And that's exactly what is happening. Mm. All others, from the certificates that I laid down today, how many can come and tell you the names of their schools and certificates and tell you they have PhD? <laughs> how many of them? Most of these things we are, we are criticizing Everybody knows they are there. Mm. But maybe because of poverty, maybe because we are so weak in this country, people are still struggling to see the continuation of this thing, to maintain the status quo, mm. which is most unfortunate. I'm so happy that uh, the point has been made here that whatever we have in the next dispensation, people should not go out there and start complaining. Mm. People who are collecting money to go and collect uh, to, 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 to elect a candidate, whatever happens, you should blame yourself. Mm. And that's the situation, that's the, that's the correct thing. Because we are lucky this time around that from our time of uh, finishing, the time we finished primary election to general election, very long time, mm. we are putting ourselves there for everybody to see, to watch us. Mm. Our health is very important. If you are sick, you are sick. Mm. Don't kill yourself. Don't crush yourself. You are sick. Please take care of your, your health. No, I didn't understand that. Uh, uh, your yeah, you will understand. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> I won't make you explain. Make I understand that, Your Excellency. Now, you see, I will tell you. Yeah. I will explain to you. Because you, you see, have you've been sitting here for since 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Uh, I might even if want you want talk. me to stand up, I will stand up for another five, 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 eh? five hours. You see, in this country, you see, people forget history. And it's very wrong. My friend, my brother, my colleague, mm. Umar Musa Radua, blessed memory. Mm. All of us knew he was sick. We knew. Oh, you even know? Everybody knew. But you know, tell us that time. Well, they didn't ask me, but I told them at the right time. Mm. So, make we appreciate now, them. You see, unfortunately, unfortunately, he accepted. I'm sure he didn't ask for it. Mm. He accepted to be president. Under normal circumstances, if it were me, I would reject. Mm. Because you see, as a human being, any day, any time, you have to assess yourself. Mm. You have to put yourself on and a scale to and look at yourself in a mirror. Mm. What can you do today and what, can, what is it that you cannot do? Mm. 
me and you now they put five bags of cement hmm. and they say they will put you on your head hmm. one will only be a fool your excellency i no go agree madam you no go agree that means you are sensible <laughs> I, I no go agree so you see that is the problem that we have mm. and at the end of the day we had to lose him in in islam we believe whether you are sick or you are there you are well if when your time comes you will go but the fact remains is everybody knows that if you go to 12th floor 12th floor in a building mm. open the window and come down you'll hardly survive it you'll only be extremely lucky to survive it mm. and these are some of the things so people have to understand people have to love this country mm. i can tell you there will come a time if you ask me to go around the southern part of the country in a vehicle with bad roads mm. i will only laugh at you mm. say we have passed that level i can tell you another one story one minute story if you want mm. go ahead when side. i was in the house of reps mm. we are so worried about uh, handing over of government to civilians mm. that time it was the general ibb so as politicians we sat down and say look we have to report ibb to zik mm. we had a committee under chuba or kadibo mm. or blessed memory we went to zik's house in the east mm. He was so happy. He came with his hand kerchief. He was so happy. Look at this exchanging pleasantries and so on. He sat down. And this same tuba stood up. Mm. And he started criticizing the president, criticizing this. Today he say he will hand over. He will tomorrow will come. He will not do it next tomorrow and so on. And as he was telling him, Zig started crying. Mm. We were all shocked we didn't know somebody who was just laughing now and now he's crying at the end of the day when we calmed him down mm. he said we are all stupid we didn't know what we did say you are very stupid all of you hmm. say look you when i was strong i was fighting people white people i didn't know their father i didn't know their mother Mm. we fought them we got independence you stupid people this your classmates these people from your villages mm. you cannot go and fight them and take over from them you have to go then he started crying again <laughs> hmm. that he is weak he cannot mm. do anything now mm. this is our time mm. we can't do it what he did in the past mm. so he even part of the fought now our own self we will be saying our turn now we suppose stand up fight the same way where our fathers fight we have to fight and do the right thing. and this fighting doesn't start with one group one person two people one section one by everybody mm. meaning that i should do the right thing mm. you as a journalist should do the right thing mm. engineers should do the right thing mm. everybody should work with synergy mm. and at the end of the day we can achieve a good result mm. what i'm trying to say in this example is that zik at that time believed that it will only take him to maybe, maybe telephone call mm. or visit but he feels that that is not the time for him to do that his time has gone mm. somebody should be doing that they should allow him because after that we had discussions mm. that he should allow me to be taking my medication good rest and so on he shouldn't be bringing bad stories to me mm. So that's, that's that's the situation now. So people should know what they can do, and not only that. Even those who are forcing themselves, I think the voters are there. Mm. If they decide to make a mistake, uh, God forbid, all of us will be there to regret it. Mm. And that's where we are. I think voters should be wiser. Mm. We have had people talking about ethnicity mm. that this is their time. This mm. is this. Mm. not 2023 23 23 we need the best mm. and i can tell you at any given time i will be ready to volunteer if there is any candidate mm. that will put ourselves and 
found him better mm. than me in terms of experience, in terms of qualification, in terms of whatever capacity that is necessary, too. capacity mm. and integrity. Mm. I will support him. You will support I him. I will support him. <laughs> and let me tell you, we have done that in the past. That is the spirit, Your Excellency. That's the spirit to move Nigeria forward. Yes. So, you see, we have done that in the past. Mm. In 1992, 93, we are talking about, we supported Abiola mm. against Topa from my own constituency, from my own polling booth in 1993. We supported him from Abiokuta, from uh, Ogun State. The same thing was Obasanjo. Mm. In 1999, I was governor elect when we supported him against Muhammad Abubakar Rimi of blessed memory. Mm. He has done so well for us. He was a good governor. But under that circumstance, we felt Obasanjo could do better. Mm. A Christian from the South. Mm. Even Jonathan, in 2011, we supported him mm. against Buhari. Mm. A Christian from the South. Mm. Who's Buhari around a uh, backyard in Kas from Kasina. Mm. We supported him. Some young men and women were trying to burn our houses. In fact, they burned so many houses in Kano. Mm. So ours has nothing to do with this issue of uh, sentiments people are talking about. And if any group, if any region, mm. Ozone, is interested in becoming president, mm. they should build a bridge. Mm. Even if I'm not contesting, I'm a Nigerian, I want to see the best. Mm. And the best today... We believe that uh, people must learn from these mistakes and take the best. In fact, I can tell you, there are people who have an extreme thinking mm. because of our situation. Mm. Some are saying even if we can hire a president from somewhere mm, to hire. come and do something for four years, mm. not, not Nigerian, to make come and do this up. work and go. Mm. Because people comfortable in Abuja, they think, start thinking of their tribe or their people mm. of their faith. People in IDPs now, in Northwest, mm. in North Central, in Northeast, mm. people in the hospitals now mm. with gunshots, mm. they're talking of their, they, maybe their, their brother is the president. Mm. So what do, they, what, do you, what do you think they are telling themselves? Depends. If anybody can come and save them from the whatever part of the world, mm. they'll be very happy with that. Mm. So we have passed the level of people thinking, and you see, some of us have prepared ourselves. Mm. In 2007, I was civil servant, as you said, for 17 years. I was governor. I was deputy speaker house or other on the constitutional conference. I was uh, uh, advi uh, minister of defense, advisor to president, and so on. Mm. I was more experienced in politics than most people who have finished their second term. Mm. Now, my mind was not to become president at that time. I wanted to go back to Kanu mm. for my unfinished job. I wasn't in a hurry. Mm. I went and fought while my friends were fighting to become president, mm. buying forms and so on. So, you see, we want people to be patient, to prepare themselves and do things at the right time. Mm. If I was president in 2003, mm. I mean, or seven, mm. I'm sure my presidency today or in 2003 uh, 23, mm. would be much better. Mm. I was governor in 1999, 2003. Mm. Mm. But I left the government house for eight years. I reflected back. Mm. What did I do right, right mm. to do more of it? Mm. What did I do wrong to avoid it? Mm. And therefore, most people in Kano were only remembering my second term. Mm. Even when my first term was very historic, mm. because it was based on that first term that, that I left eight years mm. And the same kind of people came and voted for me under okay. the same PDP, the same deputy governor. Mm. Because they were put, able to put four years mm. that I had mm. and eight years that mm. followed and felt that I had to go back to Kano. Mm. Okay, Your Excellency. Many people go, no go forgive me if I no give them opportunity, make them fit, talk with you. Many calls they come now, but what of this question? Do we ignore them? Oh, yeah, answer them, answer them before we return back. Okay, so um, to the microphone, Your Excellency. <laughs> uh -huh. There is the Ogochiku cult, mm. and uh, 
what would I do with the issue of poverty uh, in the country? Now, I think all these things we are doing, in the first place, education is key mm. in fighting poverty. Good quality education. Mm. So also all these opportunities, like this military thing, police thing, and other job opportunities that will open on the side of government. Mm. On the other side, we encourage uh, entrepreneurs, people who will invest their money locally, and those who are coming from the international community, our friends who will invest. We give them the environment necessary, the power, the water supply, the roads, and so the rail, mm. and so on and so forth. So, like in Kano, I told you, we built three cities, big three cities in Kano, mm. uh, mainly, mainly because of that time to engage everybody working mm. at that particular time. We did so many things, building schools, building hospitals, building things, and so on. Infrastructure generally generate a lot of jobs, so also agriculture mm. uh, and so on and so forth. The issue of um, minimizing health uh, tourism. Now, in the first place, government must encourage private sector mm. and the government uh, to build hospitals. Some of them, especially we have so many universities now, encourage them to build uh, world-class hospitals and those who want to build the hospital themselves, we encourage them. So also our teaching hospitals mm. and health centers, federal uh, health centers that we have, you have to raise them to be centers of excellence, to ensure that even president will be happy to be taken to any of the hospitals. Mm. You see, when I was governor in Kano, I, I asked commissioner of health. Commissioner, I was going around, I have never seen where you have an ICU. He said, you'll find out. The following day he came, he said, we didn't have. I said, okay, I have to do uh, ICU. Mm. Even if it is because of me. Mm. Because I wouldn't know with this speed that drivers are taking us, you don't know where you'll end up one day. Mm. And if there is no ICU and other facilities, at the end of the day, you may have an accident and uh, you require that. Excellency, you go, hold on. Ordinary president want to add his voice too. Good morning, the ordinary president. Again. Yeah, good morning, because of that, Ike. Yes, ordinary president. Uh, you see, this man, a person will get carry knowledge. Mm. Now, like, person from his experience, he get plenty, plenty things when he go talk. Mm. Just the way we do for other people. When we ask them question, make we allow them exhaust the answer where where mm. before we go ask them another question. Okay. I just manage come out now. Now I just uh, notice something. I say make we just adjust so that even the questions where you be interrupted before, if you get anything when you remember where you be in one talk where we know allow and talk. I bet make you make you talk. Thank you, ordinary president. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Michael, I appreciate ordinary president. Your Excellency, sir, you hear as ordinary president talk, um, uh, all the questions where they ask, anyone, where, unless the one where you think say you don't already answer them, if you even remember anything where you want to add, feel free. Now you're there. Uh, you. uh, take the microphone, sir. Thank you uh, very much, and I want to thank the uh, ordinary president for this kind uh, words um so we'll do whatever it takes to minimize uh health tourism but uh by way of doing our hospitals very well um sometimes i ask myself if president wants to go to london i always go to london i was london for many years i was in europe i was in dubai uh, on many occasions, I took people to the hospitals, and I'm conversant with their uh, facilities. The question is, what is in there, in their facilities abroad, mm. that we don't have here, and we cannot purchase them mm. and bring them? Mm. Who, which profe professional mm. that is there, mm. that federal government cannot bring them, into this country. Mm. At that age, you may be sick. But why do you have to go there? Mm. You have to have, here we have hospital in the villa itself. Mm. These are places 
meant for the president or the vice president and very other senior government officials and even people who are who have the capacity to pay mm. so for me certainly health tourism by people at that level is unnecessary and uncalled for mm. because you can bring these facilities even if it is because of you mm. other people will certainly use them mm. because they will be they will not be locked just because of you mm. we want to do x-ray x-ray machine is there if you have any other equipment bring them home mm. encourage other people to put in other hospitals for other nigerians so um i believe that uh, we have the capacity to make sure that uh, all these items are available and another thing is to build confidence into our people mm. now nigerians many nigerians believe that uh, nothing is good here especially when it comes to their health um they always want to go we will inculcate confidence in our people we will bring in special campaign mm. to convince nigeria and nigerians that ours is the best not only the area of health in all other areas now the issue of rule of law you see if you want peace in the country there must be rule of law mm. and it starts from the president himself you cannot be breaking laws and necessary laws mm. creating so much difficulties and necessary difficulties for people because you are president mm. you are president by the grace of god and grace of your people mm. and you should do whatever it takes to ensure that your people are comfortable your people are happy mm. you shouldn't be bringing unnecessary policies for example this last policy that we see from the central bank mm. now while we are happy that all those who stole the money will find it difficult to get money for campaign mm. and uh, sponsoring the elections and so on but on the other hand we are aware that government and all those concerned may decide to siphon that money quietly and give to mm. some people so that's the one of the issues there are many things tiny tiny things that people are worried about and i believe government uh, should do better uh, while i agree that there is need for a cashless society but just to a certain limit and also gradually and i'm happy to say that kano state government under my administration under our government was the first to start e payment in this country no mm. government we started it we started the the here we call it ages in kano we call it kanjis mm. i was there in the council one erufai brought it and made reference that uh, of kano that uh, we started it and is coming so we did everything to ensure that uh, uh stealing was minimized in government and i'm so happy that we did that but uh the way it is being done now i think there is a huge uh requirement for ensuring that they have done uh accordingly so all government officials uh, uh the judiciary of course my colleagues in the uh, national assembly mm. uh, we'll call them to sit down and discuss how we can make this country a better place mm. if you are in the uh, legislature you think you can do bad laws against the people okay that's where you, that's your job but there are many other areas that you don't control mm. if people decide to be wicked in that area also mm. then it becomes a big problem for you <laughs> the same thing if you are in the uh, executive you decide to be an anti people and then everybody is doing his own one day you'll find yourself in the hands of bandits and so on that were being created mm. by the system mm. so you see if we come together and do the right thing everybody will benefit mm. but if everybody decides to do his own everybody will lose mm. and i think that is what nigerians must understand mm. um
I think uh, which other page? Uh, no, I think I I handled the uh, okay the Biafra, Sambisa, and so on. I mentioned the issue of forests. Mm. Sambisa is one of them. We have many others in northern Nigeria, especially around Birlungwari, and that axis of Zamfara, Kebi, Sokoto, and so on. Mm. These are some of the hiding places for the bandits and mm. other criminals. Mm. All those places will be taken over by the military uh, to make sure there is security. Mm. And this security also will be used, especially from the beginning, the engineering corps will empower them, will give them all the equipments, all these roads, almost day one, will start working on them. And it should be purely under the military. They will do the roads and everything, open places, while other things are happening. So we see the issue of security as so key, as very important, that uh, we have to do something uh, at day one. So um, I think this is about all that uh, I can find here. Okay. Uh, I think you have uh, done justice to the questions, Your Excellency. And uh, we go open telephone line for more. And this is not the last session of it like we talk when we start. Uh, say once we take this one, we go allow a few more calls and then you go address them. But I believe say most of the things where people they ask questions about, all of them, they represented into some of these questions. Uh, for people when one calling for this last segment of this uh, session, uh, if you're there for diaspora, now plus two, three, four, eight, one, eight, 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 nine, one, zero, one, one. If you're there for diaspora outside Nigeria and you won't call into the program, make you take follow and interact with His Excellency Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso, will be the presidential candidate for the new Nigerian political uh, party, People's Party, New Nigeria People's Party. Uh, the number where you go call now plus two three four eight one. Mm -hmm. Eight eight mm -hmm. eight nine mm -hmm. one zero mm -hmm. one one. Mm -hmm. But if you day inside Nigeria, any part of Nigeria where you day na zero nine zero nine nine eight eight seven seven zero zero. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, Kozaka Ike. Yes, now who they call us for the program Break at a Family? Okay, now me, Shas, I'm from Delta State. And I want to ask Excellency. Where you they call Officer from? Uh, Where you they call from? It's a question. Where you they call from? I they call from France, but uh, I they use the Italian language to call. From France, okay. Oh, yeah, but not they go. Okay. No, I think they talk to nobody will don't make sure uh, this Bakasi Pelusola will they give to Cameroon. Mm. And other presidents call. Mm. I think they go who put that matter. I know say that thing they worry on other presidents for mind. Well, where mm. will they say Bakasi Pelusola will they give to Cameroon? Okay. It'd be like say you know the following when he answer, he don't talk about them. Um, uh, if you get any other okay. question, you and, ask. Uh, the, the other issue about our military intelligence, we'll be saying not the work well, because I lost my nephew, 2021, mm. we'll be saying uh, the, uh, the military general, we'll be saying all that, uh, the military to took over uh, uh, mountain for 48 hours. 48 hours, we'll be saying, you know, no intelligence military, we'll be saying I lost my, my nephew. Because of that one, mm, okay. because Nigerian military need to have intelligence before they move forward. Mm, sorry about your loss. You go answer that one. Okay. Even and though you don't, 
they don't talk some things where relate to security here many times. Uh, we take another call now. Hello, good morning, Gin. Morning, sir. Yeah. Yes. Hello, morning, sir. Good morning, Gin. Yes, sir. I'm Mr. Clincher from Abuja, sir. Abuja, waiting they chuck you for leave a kumeme on top of the matter where we they talk for studio. The is about recruitment of police. Huh? It has been long that they recruited police, and that is the cause of some uh, security challenges we have in Nigeria. Okay. Yes, sir. You, you be police, or you want join police? I want join police, and you know, if you look at the population of Nigeria. Uh. We are about 200 million. Mm. Hello, sir. Yes, the thing where you they talk, you don't need to worry about them because even His Excellency talk and say the number, they're very low. Say, na part of him priority, say, he go increase the number, but not be only number, he go also add capacity, join that number plus better welfare. Now, waiting we hear him talk here. Hello, good morning. Mm. Hello, good morning. Yes, who the value with us? Okay. My name is Chinedu. I'm calling from Germany. You are calling from Germany. Chinedu, Vano, they go. All right. Thank you very much. My question goes like this to so His Excellency. I want to ask him a straight question. In case all this, all this what he promises, he couldn't achieve them, maybe in one year, mm -hmm. can he be honorable enough to resign? Because in Africa, it's always hard for people in order to resign. Mm. I want you to answer it. Just a direct question. Okay. Thank I, you. I don't hear that one. Make one appreciate you, Nedu. Hello, good morning, Gay. Hello. Yes, now who they not with us? It'd be like, say, don't go. Hello, good morning, Gay. Come on. I want to ask you a question. Hello, good morning. It be like say those ones I no know what thing then they listening to. It come be like say then they're confused where then they. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Kosota Ike. Yes, now who the vano with us for the program break the family? Yeah, this is Nduka from Spain. Nduka from Spain. Waiting you won't talk. Yes. Mm. Yes, uh, I want to congratulate, thank uh, His Excellency for his, uh, all his co contribution. Mm. And uh, most of the questions that uh, we are supposed to ask, he has answered most of the questions. Mm. And uh, my prayer is for God to give us a good leader. Mm. Uh, what we are passing through in that country, we have a good country, but what we don't have is a good leader that we will take us through. Mm. And uh, I still want to ask uh, our Excellency about the uh, international relationship. International because we relationship. in the diaspora, we suffer so long, mm. uh, so long, because with no more, Nigeria does not have any value mm. in this uh, diaspora. Mm. So how will he be able to put everything through so that we have a good relationship with the international? Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Ndoka from Spain. Uh, hello, good morning, Hello, good morning. Yes, now who they know with us for the program break the family? Uh, we your line be like say the network where you did they're very bad. You they hear us? Yes, sir. Can you hear you, sir? Make you adjust small, make we see whether I go better. I adjust sir. Can okay. you hear me now? Uh, yes, I have Vano. My name is Usman Mika Ilihaya from Kosong Area Temple Area Center. Mm-hmm. Hello, sir. Will they hear you, Vano, they go? Hey, hey, I want to ask our Jagora, what mm. you will do about the judiciary, sir? About? That is my question, sir. About judiciary. what? Judiciary. Judiciary, sir. Ju ju judiciary. Thank you very much yes. for that one. Uh, you don't ask about judiciary. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Consultant Ike. Hello, good morning, Nigerians. Mm. Now, who the Vano with us for the telephone now? My name is Mm -hmm. AKA AAA. Mm. I want to say to our distinguished uh, Senator Lebiragi uh, Musa mm. uh, the presidential candidate of uh, one of the greatest parties that has emerged recently in the political 
uh, terrain of Nigeria. Mine is not a question, it's a contribution to uh, say something very important. Mm. On Friday, 24th of September 2018, precisely, I was on a journey between Abuja and Lagos. Mm. And um, I boarded one of the commercial airlines in Nigeria here. Mm. And uh, we went through a very serious turbulence. If you go back to history on that day, it rained heavily in Lagos, like for a long time, it has not rained like that in Lagos. Mm. We were threatened with the landing. And the pilot was extraordinarily um, able to maneuver the plane. For over one hour plus, we were rotating around Lagos. In fact, most of us had given up. Mm. Eventually, we were forced to come back to Abuja, and then the, uh, the plane was um, serviced and refueled and went back to Lagos. Mm. But you know the very funny thing? The pilot that flew that plane that day mm. was one of the products of Radi Musa Konkosso's training. Mm. He lead me because I took time to ask him. I have a picture. I asked him, I said, were you trained in Nigeria? He said, thanks to God and thanks to Rabbi Musa Konkoto's government that sent us out for training as pilots. Mm. And, you know, I believe something, so many good things can come out of Nigeria if we give the right opportunity to the right people. Mm. So for me, I was eternally grateful to God. I was eternally grateful to him for being able to see the vision that Nigeria uh, as a country would need more power like this mm. and he invested in it. Mm. Not only for his family, he could have trained one single pilot to fly his own private jet. Mm. But he trained them to be able to serve Nigeria and Nigerians and humanity in general. Mm. On that day, if we were not lucky to have the right pilots with the right training, mm. God knows that probably, probably we will not be here talking today. Mm. So, for that singular honor, for that singular opportunity, I say thank you, Rabbi Musa Fonkoso. Mm. And whether you are the president of Nigeria or not, Allah gives power and Allah takes it from whom he will. Mm. But know that Nigerians will recognize you and put you in the annals of history as one of the greatest pillars of people who have ever moved this country forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, so is supposed to be when you invest your time to serve your people the way where you supposed Hello? to serve them. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, now who the vano with us for the program, Break It A Family? I am Hadjia Hadjiza Mama Sanyi. And where you the vano from? From Kone. Eh? Kone, Republic of Niger. Niger, okay. Kone. My prayer goes to His Excellency, uh, Engineer Rabi Umusa Konkosu. Mm. I'm urging him to come back, even if by divine uh, happening he didn't make, he doesn't make it to the presidency. Mm. He should continue to come until, by the grace of God, we elect him president and he becomes president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes, I'm a full-fledged Nigerian, but resident in Kony. Mm. Now my question goes to him as thus. If, by the grace of God, he becomes president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. how would he be able to harvest complaints, information, and suggestions mm. from the elite radio and television house, um, Human Rights Radio? Mm. Thank you. That's all for him. Okay. So. Okay. It'd be like, say, before you go, even that uh, question, they don't already answer them. When they talk how from Nkanu State, we are... Um, boxes, information, suggestion boxes, they everywhere, whether not for Moscow, for Churchill, for Emir Palace, for Market, and they talk, say, anybody where they bring information, no even write your name or your telephone number. And now waiting, he collect from there, according to him, he take, do most of the work where he do to respond to places where he require response quick, quick, and also manage security well. Hello, good morning. Uh, this one, no agree off in phone. It just, uh, you know, agree off waiting to take the monitor us. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Yes. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. If you no go come out for that radio, I go off him. I don't come out and please, I don't come out and please. Uh -huh. My name is Celeste Igwe. Okay. From, uh, yes. I want to ask... Uh, Mr. 
one person, the president of incoming president of Nigeria, a mm. question. Mr. Senator, mm. if you are the president of Nigeria, if God is going to be the president of Nigeria, mm. can you stop the issue of NEPA? The way that you can say it in Nigeria here. Mm. NEPA. And that one, you mentioned about uh, the actual question about iPod. Mm. Because what, what, what's what's causing the problem? Mm. He didn't answer the that question where do I want it? Okay, he go answer I want to ask that if, question. If uh, if you be a president of Nigeria, mm. are you taking Nigeria to be more unity? Mm. So okay. I can't be sure Okay, he go answer them. Okay. Even the NEPA own a don't answer. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Yes, good morning. Now who the vanna with us? Uh now patient the vanna with you from UK. UK, which part of UK? Newcastle. Newcastle. Oh, yeah, patients were not there. Go. Okay, sir. Good morning, my uh, presidential candidate. Glad to come. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. My question to you is this Will you support for our Nigerian constitution to be amended mm. based on the uh, powers given to the president that most of the powers should be released to? Uh, the citizens, like appointment of uh, political offices, like uh, uh, ministers and other stuff, mm. and they should maybe mm. Nigerian citizens should be able to um, elect who they want to be their ministers mm. based on their performance. Okay. And two, will you support that um, if a bill is passed before the election, if it is possible, that capital punishment should be uh, should be uh, should we introduced our Nigerian constitution based on the corruption we have. Okay. Because if you look at other countries like the Middle East and other uh, Western China, mm. they put capital punishment for those who embezzle money for so that we scare them off from stealing our money. Mm. Okay, then, thank, thank you, please, patience. Uh-uh. Please, we, we don't put in law that this four year term they put in Nigerian constitution mm. that it should be for performance. Mm-hmm. Because there are many people that they will be there in the office for four years, they don't do anything. Mm. But with that performance, we determine if Nigeria will say we want to continue with this government mm. or we want them out. Okay, patience quickly. Patience Qu- Qu- quickly. The last question answer there, no being go give you that answer. Four years now for performance, because after four years another election they happen. If we will be the uh, voters, they measure performance and be honest with ourselves without allowing our votes to be bought or sold. We go also reward who perform. The person where no perform, we go remove him. The other one where you talk That's about true. reducing his power as a president, if he become president, now he go answer him by himself. He go take him on match up onions, whether he go reduce in power, he no one reduce him. Thank you for that one. Hello, good morning. By uh, 12.30 on the dot, we stop taking phone calls. We return back to the studio for him to answer the questions, and we close for the day. Hello, good morning. Mm, if I say this one, die loss, go begin, do another thing. Uh, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, now who the vano with us? Uh, my name is Kelly. How do you Kelly from Berlin, Germany. Berlin, Germany. You know, go come out from the thing where you take the monitor or see they do nyaw, 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 nyaw for the uh, radio station. Sorry. Mm. Sorry. Uh, you go off and you come out from the oil vano? I don't offer. Mm. Yeah. But please, my question go to Mr. Kwakoso. Mm. The, the question is about uh, Nigeria Airport. Mm. Because the way the uh, immigration and the uh, Workers in airport, they extract, uh, extract uh, people. It's very, very wrong. So, mm. and uh, we don't know who their duty and who not their duty at all. Mm. It's bad. Okay. Thank you very much. Everybody, they talk where they pay them. They talk, say, them where they travel so, from inside Nigeria. They know they like the kind treatment where they get for airports with immigration and all of them and customs. They don't even know who their duty. Some they no get no no name tag nothing. They go just the some of them they harass them, collect money from them anyhow. And uh, make we take this one again. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You know they're ready to talk. Hello, good morning. 
Hello? Yes, good morning, Gay. Good morning, Kolbata I. Yes, who they were not with us? My, yeah, this is Austin, calling from Dublin. Austin from Dublin, Vano de Go. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, please, uh, uh, my question is that to His Excellency, my question is that, please, can, can we, Nigerian, can the president, can he didn't have the power to take away this power of, um, uh, is it uh, in the indigenous form, this indigenous form, that, that, that Nigeria be one? Mm. That, that's called indigenous form. It's mm. not. It's mm. not. It's not even telling us that we are one. Mm. Where be the, say? Mm. Where be say people Hello? they get benefit based on the indigen where they be for where they be. I think now you mean. Yes, that's what that's what I mean. Okay, and um, make in, I, in the, in the, what, what, that indigen form. Okay, make I answer you directly. Make you no waste your time. Uh, oh. In talk say when in day for Kanu State, he talks say he give in one particular session over 3,000 persons, and he make law say any person will make first class in any university as long as he reside in Kanu, he no need to be indigenous of Kanu. Say he give him scholarship. At least with that one, oh. he shows say he understand the kind disadvantage where that kind thing they bring, and they know they're ready to sustain them. The only thing where we go begin as we say whether he go sustain the same thing. By the grace of God, when God confirm him, the president and commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We talk, say, by 12.30, we go and telephone call. Hello, now, good morning. Yes, good morning. Now, who they were not with us for the program, Break at the Family? My, 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 my name is Godwin Isha, And you they were not from where? You call the wrong number. Here, part of the reasons why Nigeria they get problem, you know, they make move forward. Now people know they obey rules. They know they will follow instruction. The number where you call, not be what you call. Hello, good morning. Good morning, consultant. Ike. Yes, now who the family? Good morning, family. Yes. My name is Hadiza Ibrahim, calling from Dublin, sir. Hadeza Ibrahim from Dublin. What do you want to talk this morning for this matter? Um, the issue that I would like to ask His Excellency Dr. Raibu Musa Konkosu. Mm. Initially, I was born and brought up in Kano, mm. in Bombay Barracks, down to Tudumada. Mm. So we are living very close to Bombay Industrial Estate. Because from our houses, you can be seeing all the factories and all that. Mm. I could remember like um, 2006 to 2007 when I was doing my diploma in Kano State Polytechnic. Mm. We conducted a research whereby from 1999 to that period, mm. like 319 factories were closed down. 319? Of course. They we are closed down. Mm. They we are not functioning at all. Mm. So it happens that when I was growing up as a kid, you know, I like uh, all these young boys that I used to know in our area. Mm. You hardly see them around because they have a lot of jobs that they are doing in those factories. Mm. I could remember Sava Malt. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Ask your question directly. Um, ask your question directly now. What do you want to ask His Excellency? Okay. We all know that power and energy is the key factor to the success of each and every economy. Mm. So, because like what they said, it's lack of sufficient power supply. That was what put so many of those factories out of business, out of production and all that. Mm. So you are not I asking the like question. Ask I go shut you. I go off the line. What, mm. what does he intend to do mm. in reviving the power supply mm. in the country in general, not mm. only Kano State? Thank you very much for that one. Uh, in Don Hiaram. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Mm. Good morning. Now, who have you with us? Hello, <laughs> Hello, no. good. Oh, yeah, Vano, they go. No, no, no. Mm. Yeah, I it be like, say, uh, no, be us where you plan to call. 
Or maybe he won't call his yeah, excellency hello. directly uh, on his hello. personal line. Hello, good morning, Guy. Yeah, good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Now, who the Vano? Yeah, was? this is uh, Yerima calling from uh, Kotono, Banana Republic. Okay, Vano, they go. Yes. Uh, what I, what I want to ask about uh, this road, this is our road in, uh, in almost the 36th street, especially uh, yeah, in, uh, SPC, uh, SPC in Abuja. Mm. No road, no construction that is going on. I want to know what uh, our partner is going to do about it. Uh, 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 and uh, also, I don't hear Ram. I don't ask about road. Now we go return back to the studio. Uh, I believe, say most of the questions where people they ask now, now questions where other people don't ask and answers don't come for them. Uh, but he gets two numbers where the struggle seems to call me. One now from US, another one now uh, UK. Hello, good morning. I don't know whether nine be Hello. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Mm -hmm. Family, good morning from good morning. United Kingdom. Yes, from United Kingdom. What can be your name? My name is uh, Dr. Chuma, uh, deployer. Okay, Dr. I, Chuma. I, I am calling from Birmingham, United Kingdom. Oh, yeah, Dr. Chuma, Vano, you get only 30 seconds. All right, I just want to ask the presidential candidate uh, that is there, Alaji uh, Kwankoso. I don't like using that word, Excellency. We have not had anything excellency in Nigeria. Mm. Um, please, Alaji uh, Kwankoso, uh, I want to ask you all the good things you have said. When, um, about the uh, division, you are desired to be a president. Hmm. And you know that we are coming out from Northern President. You want to go in as a president again from the North. Hmm. How can you be able to um, join with Southern President and then so Nigeria can move forward? And secondly, you didn't say anything about all the Alamajiri schools that Jonathan built in the North during his time. Okay, in the talk about you hold do on, to make hold, sure that those schools on, are doctor, there. Hold on, doctor. Today, is they here to talk about the one where in do? No, be the one where Jonathan do. Hmm? Make we pose, make we po put them in the proper perspective. Now himself, if they talk about today. Uh, so make we focus on I mean, him. Tell us the one where in build. When Jonathan won't contest, come in, uh, in own, we go tell him, he go tell us the one where in build too. Thank you very much. We don't return back to the studio. Make we take the answers. Uh, on I am say most of the questions now are questions where people don't already ask. Uh, you, you want ask something? Give a microphone. Give a microphone, quick, quick. Good afternoon, Consultant Ike. Yes. Good afternoon, Your Excell Excellency. My name is Uzo Mokeji. Mm. You know, I actually um, didn't know much about the your excellency you know even though the ordinary president has been talking about allergic kwakwansu allergic kwakwansu you know i didn't know much and i was actually skeptical until i saw you and i heard from you today mm. so today now i know why the ordinary president was always talking about you i appreciate you so much mm. uh, there are three questions i want to ask but I, I will start with comments then they will lead to questions number one is you know, we keep talking about infrastructure in Nigeria. And uh, um, I remember that when China was host, hosting the Beijing Olympics, the stadium, the, the, the stadium was designed by the British and built by the Germans. And after that, all stadia everywhere is being built by China. The fast rail uh, track in China was also de uh, designed and built by the Germans. And today, China is doing that everywhere in the world. But in Nigeria, we keep talking about infrastructure. They keep building, and they keep designing and building for us. Eventually, they will finish all the infrastructure in Nigeria, and they will keep maintaining them, and no Nigerian engineers will be involved. And I don't see how a country makes progress this way. Mm. That is number one. Number two is uh, restructuring. Mm. You know, they keep talking about restructuring. I'm skeptical, I'm actually afraid, you know, because we don't know where this restructuring is going to lead to. It's so vague, nobody understands it. And I don't know what it is for. Mm. We know that we have some problems, but we're, we're not supposed to be talking about restructuring. Because if you restructure Nigeria, you know, uh, Russia is, one, is the greatest country in this world, potentially. 
But Rush America appears to be economically more powerful than Russia because they have 50 states and these 50 states are all empowered. While in Russia, you have just Moscow and maybe one or two other three places. That is the problem with Russia. And Nigeria, we're blessed that we have 36 states. Why even should we be talking about more? If all these states are empowered and they are economically viable, you should understand how powerful Nigeria should be. But we're talking about restructuring, and this restructuring might lead to regional, uh, regionalism, mm. where you find Enugu, Port Harcourt, uh, Lagos, and uh, um, Kano as centers of development. Begin in this, to round up. Begin to round these up places, quickly. You know? mm. So I'm skeptical about that. Then number, th number three, you know, we have 36 states in Nigeria. Most of the regions have six states. One has five states, and the other one has seven. Nobody is talking about these things. Even the people who have seven, they are not even, you know, feeling that it's cheating, that they have seven and one has only five. They are not talking about it, and everybody appears to be comfortable. Okay, so, is that your last question? Yeah, that's my last okay, question. Okay, thank you. We will yeah. stop there, make we take response from His Excellency, and then we thank know you. say today, I think he has done justice to this. He will give us his final word, and we will pack Kaya. We go pack Kaya, come off our studio. In case, make, uh, Elijah, I know they look me bad. Uh, if you want to go give uh, peace a chance, go give peace a chance. Uh, because I see how some people, they look me bad uh, here. In case you won't give peace a chance, studio door do open, your feet go, give peace a chance, come back. We go allow you. No, you get as you take the look me when I day here, I notice them. Uh, Your Excellency, sir. I don't know whether you're ready you. to take on the questions. The ones yes. where you don't answer already. Well, the ones you that I answered, maybe I'll just uh, skip uh, them. Uh -huh. Unless you um, want to add, though, you dare at liberty to add. Well, it's okay. Uh, mm. Sharp from... France talked about Bakasi, which uh, has been handled earlier on. Um, the gentleman who talked about the military intelligence and talked about losing his uh, nephew is very unfortunate. And uh, I think these are the areas that uh, the military and, of course, the commander-in-chief must start looking at. But certainly, if we have opportunity, we'll try and carry everybody along. We'll work with the international community, our friends all over the world mm. that have a lot of information and a lot of interest in what we are doing because we are lucky today we live in a global village that whatever is happening here can easily affect other uh, places. So intelligence is very key to any military operation because without it, uh, hardly can any uh, military succeed in whatever they are doing. Now, the issue of recruitment of police, which was being mentioned as an issue, you see, that is why in our blueprint, we decided to create what we call community participation and reorientation committees, CPRC. Mm. These committees are to be established in all the 8,809 words across the country. And we have selected 11 people. We call them our first 11 in those words. One of them is a the traditional ruler there. Here in the north, we call him either Degechi or something. In the southwest, I think it's Bali and so on. And we have similar committee at uh, local government, at state and at national level. In the words which we believe will do most of the work, others will only coordinate. Government has decided that in, the, in addition to the uh, traditional ruler, there will be the most senior clergy or imam. In that word, there will be uh, representatives of uh, students, representatives, of retiree, more senior retiree there. Uh, of course, there will be our party, NNPP, and another party, most uh, uh, the major other party in that ward. We have 11 of them, including women, 
uh, and of course representative of uh, people with disability and so on and so forth. So this committee will be funded directly from the federal government using all the appropriate uh, legislation and uh, we believe this committee, if pan uh, funded, they will handle the issue of dilapidated schools. In all the states I visited, including the southern states so far, there was no school I saw, government school, without one or two dilapidated blocks. And we believe that, uh, as we have done in Kano, this committee will be able to handle all the schools uh, in terms of infrastructure, Sometimes, if necessary, be even hire some uh, teachers with the resources as a stopgap. And of course, they will handle the issue of health or clinics and so on, uh, and all other facilities. And we'll also use it to screen at the level. Everybody has got a word in this country. And uh, we want to take the best. And uh, we need to consult this committee for. Uh, recruiting the police, even the military, and many other security agencies, the uh, uh, agents, because we don't want to take people who would come and compound our problem. So selection will be uh, very important. And uh, uh, of course, many other things that uh, we are going to do under this uh, 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 the committee, uh, as I said earlier on, all this exam, the, uh, the one are taken of education, all the examinations and so on, uh, the NECO, the WAEC, the JAM are going to be uh, free. And uh, I wanted to mention the issue of uh, out-of-school children that were about 20 million. And uh, we intend to build about uh, 500,000 classrooms to ensure that everybody goes to uh, school. Um, uh, Chinedu from Germany uh, asked whether I should, uh, I can resign if need to be, uh, if I become president. Mm. You see, whatever I will say, uh, you may not uh, understand it. So I will give you an example. You see, I was a civil servant for 17 years. I decided to go into politics and I resigned. I left mm. that place. I don't want to give too many examples, but I want to tell him that I was in NDDC representing mm. Northwest. Mm. But the corruption at that time was at its highest peak. I couldn't stay there because I felt that I should not soil my fingers. Mm. And I resigned. Not only I resigned, I went and had a meeting with uh, President Jonathan, and I told him what was happening there. Even though he was very angry with me at that particular time, mm. he requested that I should give him my representative. I say, sir, that place is stinking. I have to go. Why should I give you? He insisted I give him the chairman of my party at that time. Uh, and uh, within a few months, he had to dissolve that board because maybe he had more information uh, mm. to dissolve it. So I can go on and on. Uh, resignation is uh, something that uh, once I find something that uh, is not good for me or is not good for the people that I'm representing, uh, definitely it's easy. But let me say that uh, from my record, I'm sure Nigerians will be extremely happy mm. because they will see real change uh, based on the experiences, capacity, and so on. Uh, in Nigeria, I don't think we can even go to that extent. Mm. I believe that Nigeria will be a better place for everybody. Um, international relationship by Induka in Spain. Now, you see, just recently I was invited to go to France. I had a very good uh, meeting or meetings with various stakeholders in government, uh, good meetings with some selected companies, uh, especially those who have got uh, businesses here. And along the line, we discuss a lot of uh, uh, the relationship, bilateral relationship 
between us and that country and uh, international relationship also and from there we are also invited to united uh, um, 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 america united states of america and uh, we had a meeting in uh, the white house uh, and of course uh, state house and uh, these are some of the issues that uh, we have discussed and i'm happy to say that uh, being a former minister of defense i had reasons to meet with so many friends across the country some have retired some are still active in politics and so on so uh, it's not something new uh, to me so i believe that uh, we will do a wonderful uh, international relationship but uh, i believe our interest will always be at the center we will embark on very uh, serious economic uh, uh, diplomacy and so on to make sure that whatever we do will benefit uh, uh, our interest and of course it will be for uh, mutual interest of our countries uh, usman talked about uh, judiciary well i think i mentioned the issue of uh, judiciary um, judiciary like uh, executive uh, of course and uh, legislature you see once the head is good i have mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind that everybody will queue up uh, but if the head is has problem problem will permeate and it affect uh, uh, your everybody. excellency close to the mouth to your mouth the microphone okay. so that people where they yes. outside go they hear you okay well i am um, i thank uh, abdurrahman who talked about uh, the good pilot i'm happy that uh, we had uh, the pilots 100 of them they are all over the country and even beyond mm. training a pilot is not just training the him or her mm. because out of them we have a woman out of the 100 mm. uh, yes she is very active uh, also flying wow. uh, um, commercial uh, flights mm. so the training is to empower them and the family to empower the state and empower the country mm. actually i feel very much honored anytime i feel fulfilled mm. anytime i go into uh, that uh, any aircraft any fly, any uh, airline mm. and i find our products and it's not only the pilots we train so many crews mm. in kaduna and uh, most of the flights uh, that uh, we see today especially uh, here in the flights in northern nigeria uh, cruise inside uh, our products not only that we have trained also so many uh, engineers mm. uh, marine engineers in india and the united kingdom and in south africa marine engineers marine engineers they are all over the world today in fact they are in post authority they are in maritime authority and so on and so forth and uh, many of them are handling international ship or ships uh, across uh, the world so but those ones is difficult to 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 get in touch to come in, into contact with them mm. because they are always in the high sea. in the seas mm. now i feel happy because i always remember when we any time we are inviting them any time they were going mm. we invite them i talk to them i brief them i advise them and normally before they leave we are always paying their fees and so on in advance and uh, as a tradition we always give them all of them without exception at least 200 dollars mm. and jokingly tell them that uh, on the road if they for whatever reason they touch somebody's uh, ground nut and fall down they can pay before they reach oh, wow. and collect <laughs> their money so um Yarima talked about roads i think we have handled the issue mm. uh, of roads and uh gentleman uh, dr chuma from birmingham he said there is no excellency in nigeria mm. well that is his opinion but uh, I am of the firm belief mm. that there are few, if you like, if you say few, mm. many of us will believe that he has excluded us. Mm. And uh, some of us have done so well.
mm. that uh, uh, I don't think is polite mm. for anybody not to believe that we are, despite all what we have done. Mm. I've been in the system for 30 years. I have done all this that has been mentioned mm. without a blemish. Mm. And if somebody talks to me and says there is no excellency, then I begin, begin to wonder what else do you want? Mm. Wherever, I mean, he, he called from, uh, uh, from Birmingham. Mm. I was in the UK for 10 years. Mm. I know all the corners. Maybe I was, was due respect to him. Maybe I was in Birmingham before him. Mm. I'm conversant with British politics. Mm. I don't think there is any politician there with due respect to them. They are doing their best. That will come and claim that there is no excellency in Nigeria. Mm. I believe there are some excellencies, and I believe I am one of them. And but I uh, make you there for this studio. So, um, Your Excellency, but, yes, not be everybody that enter this studio. Now, because of your track records, I make ordinary president say make we carry you today. You don't need to worry about that one. No, I think you need to mm. remind him. Mm. I think it's very. Uh, he has that his own, mm. but I think we need to remind him. Mm. And I wish he's somebody that I can meet you and see? compare notes mm. with him, and tell him all the reasons why there are some few excellencies Excellency. you in, see this, in this country. You see, because uh, mm. I think some of these things, mm. while we are doing our best, mm. we know there are many bad people. Some people Very even correct. believe that politics is a bad game, mm. or a dirty game. Mm. No, it's not. Mm. When somebody says it's dirty, you cannot say, I don't know what he's doing in Birmingham, for example. Mm. But the fact remains that what he's, whatever he's doing, uh, 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 Maybe if he's a student, I don't know that he's a student. I was a student there. Mm. Uh, I've read to the highest level. Mm. And uh, I have had opportunity to be almost everywhere. Mm. And we have done our best. And uh, some of these statements uh, are not encouraging. Mm. If you say you are not excellency, despite all what we have done, without all the, 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 the sacrifices, mm. then something is wrong. And I think, uh, I think it's some of the reasons Nigerians, one of the things Nigeria must do, is to encourage people, mm. even those who have tried small, mm. encourage them to do more. So that but if you condemn more. them, if mm. I agree with him now, there is no excellency. Mm. Then if I go there and become excellency, I will do what the people who are not excellency were doing. Mm. So I will not take that. Mm. I believe there are excellencies uh, by any standard. Mm. And uh, I am out there and I told you, because some of these people... You could know their direction. Maybe they have uh, uh, can supporting particular candidates. Mm. And uh, I can tell them that uh, in terms of being excellency, we are far much ahead of them. We started earlier than them. We are, in fact, very much more excellency mm. uh, than they are. Now, the issue of uh, Northern Presidency. I have answered that. Mm. I have answered that. Many people are even going. In fact, many of them are from uh, di in the diaspora. Mm. Saying that if you can import somebody from somewhere to come and do it, mm. uh, get the best. I'm not looking for a uh, tribesman. Mm. And these are the issues in the politics. You become so self-centered. Mm. You start looking only within your, your cocoon. Your yeah, that is either you mm. or not. You see, people should m be strategic. They should be uh, 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 planning. They should not be insulting other people. Now, in our own opinion, is the time to take the best for Nigeria. Mm. And if any candidate, I'm ready for debate with any candidate mm. today, no. if they can prove mm. that anyone is better than Concourse, I said it here. Mm. Let him let them bring our CVs. Let's mm. bring our achievements in life. Mm. If somebody thinks he's better, then okay, we'll put it. So, um... And, and uh, that's the issue of, of, of North. Mm. And I want to advise some of you, the... You, you have already answered that, yes, Your Excellency, and, and you answered it well. Thank you. To the extent you say that whoever that will add value better than you, you will be happy and willing to support that. No answer is better than that. Okay. I hope mm. uh, Thank uh, you. our friend Chuma uh, in, in Birmingham... Uh, had that mm. and uh our brother here um uzo 
he was talking about uh, involving, he gave example of uh, constructions in China mm. by Germans and British. At the end of the day, they took over. And that's exactly what we want to do. Mm. Earlier on, I told you that, for example, in Kano, mm. I have, let's say, 10 construction companies. Mm. If they are ready to participate in our program, mm. we will bring them together with their equipments well evaluated, with their personnel and everything. Mm. We form a stronger company. Mm. And we give them roads. We give them other areas of construction. Mm. And of course, by that, Nigerians will be very much involved. Mm. Instead of these small, small, small companies uh, talking to people, uh, doing all sorts of things, the quality of roads are not good, mm. and so on and so forth. So um, I think that's exactly what we intend to do, as China did. Mm. And we can only do that when we bring our strength together mm. so that uh, we can construct a better road. Now, the issue of uh, restructuring, I said it before, that uh, it's there even in the uh, blueprint, Mm. That we are ready to listen to Nigerians. Mm. If Nigerians require restructuring, so be it. Mm. We well, let's do uh, follow due process. What is I remember important is what is good for Nigeria. Yeah, what mm. is good for Nigeria. In the 1994-95 Constitutional Conference, many people bring the, brought the idea of going back to parliamentary. Mm. It was well debated. Mm. At the end of the day, majority felt presidential system is better. Uh, was, was the best. Mm. And today, uh, uh, amendment of the Constitution is continuous. Mm. If there is anything we want to add or subtract, the National Assembly is there, mm. Presidency is there, State Assemblies are there, mm. and these are the requirements to amend uh, a Constitution. Constitution. Mm. All what we have to do is to ensure that uh, when we are amending the Constitution, is not being done based on selfishness to uh, stifle some other states or some people mm. or to make life more difficult for anybody uh, in Nigeria. So we are ready to do whatever it takes to ensure that uh, we have effective uh, leadership and by extension we have uh, good Nigeria or mm. better Nigeria. Mm. Now, the issue of uh, states, yes, we have states now, some states, uh, I mean, we have a zone with five states, we have another one with seven states, uh, maybe at the time of formation or creation, mm. some factors must have been taken mm. uh, into consideration maybe population, mm. maybe land area, mm. and, you know, many other things. Mm. You see, I was checking the figures released by INEC. Mm. Kaduna and Kanu, they have well over 10 million registered voters. Mm. We have a zone with five states, 11 million registered voters. Mm. Two states, that's in the northwest. If you add Kasina, that's the ones we call 3K. Mm. Then you have 14 million, million over 14, 15 million. Mm. Three states, the 3K. Mm. Where we have five states, we have 11 million registered voters mm. as released by INEC. Mm. So you see, even in the Northwest, for example, if you take an uh, example, many people would say that these three states put together mm. have over 14 million and they are still part of one zone. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, Northwest, while another zone has got uh, 11 million and they have five states. So there are arguments for and against. We can go on and on. Mm. Our only concern is that uh, creation of states in general terms is good. But at the end of the day, what of the sustainability? Mm. How many states today 
can boast of saying that they can stand alone mm. in case the oil wells dry up. We have to look at all these issues. So, but you see, the main thing is we are open. We will do whatever it takes to do the right thing at the right time. Certainly, we must not shy away from uh, anything that will uh, harm or cheat other individuals or uh, uh, groups. Mm. So um, I think there are some people, somebody who called from Niger a Republic, and uh, I am happy that uh, Aha is here. Hajia Hadiza from Kone, Niger Republic. Mm. Kone, yes. So um, I'm so happy she called, and I'm happy here to say that uh, when I was governor of Kano, I noted the relationship between Niger and Nigeria, especially mm. with Kano. Mm. And that was why we were the first to build boarding secondary school in Niger Republic mm. with Kano State money under arrangement with Niger Republic. Niger Republic agreed with us that we would build the school. They will provide feeding because it was going to be boarding school and teachers in French and will provide teachers in English. Mm. Uh, so we are sending teachers from Kano. We are sending 100 students per annum, young men and women who are trained in French. Mm. Our idea and agreement was that they would go to the French universities in France and in uh, 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 Niger itself. Mm. And of course, in our university, in Northwest University and Bayero University, which we created those uh, 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 departments. So um, we are so happy with Niger. We work together with them, very good people, and uh, we'll continue to maintain relationship with all our uh, neighbors. neighbors. Now, um, the human rights uh, radio is, uh, that was answered. Uh, I think there is this still the issue of uh, uh, supporting the constitutional amendment by patients in, in uh, we have handled that Your Excellency, capital today, punishment closer to the microphone closer thank capital you capital punishment, punishment. Mm. in nigeria um you see the issue of capital punishment uh for example uh if you look at what is happening now in all the government houses in in this country mm. including uh, our own in Kano for the eight years I did not sign uh, any paper uh, to execute uh, offenders or people. are you no agree sign your excellence I didn't sign why yes you see I will tell you somebody was talking of judiciary mm. we have seen many cases in this country, not even in this country, even in Europe. I followed a case where somebody went to court and of course made a pronouncement that he committed that uh, crime. Mm. At the end of the day, many years after, mm. it was found that that man did not commit the crime. Uh -uh. So what him make and come and confess? Because they were, not, they were not killing or executing anybody. In the UK, for example, mm. you have life imprisonment and so on. Mm. So I believe that uh, these are areas that uh, people have to be careful. Mm. I know there are a lot of debates for and against the issue of capital, capital punishment. Uh, punishment. Mm. And uh, we need to be very careful with our system, uh, especially with the police and even with the judiciary itself. Mm. Because... Uh, we often get some miscarriage uh, of justice. Mm. And once somebody executed, is gone. Uh, no, no chance, matter, to, no chance to, to correct anything. anything. And that's why we are being uh, very careful. 
many people know what is happening in the police stations mm. and even in the judicial system mm. itself so we need to improve all those areas uh before uh i can put a paper and sign so may then kill somebody yes. because they commit that, crime that make we appreciate them thank you um the issue of custom immigration and many other officers in the airport actually is a huge embarrassment to everybody i can tell you last time i went to this airport in abuja mm. i sent somebody that i was going together with him i didn't know before i went he had to give a lot of money to so many people mm. when i went there these same people followed us mm. up to the last point i was going somebody was barricading me that i didn't give him money hmm. this same person your excellency good make you people like ona wego be president of this country make ona see him yeah now, the but thing where ordinary person they suffer and when we complain it they be like say we just exaggerate hmm. it good say you suffer him. yes we see it's good that i suffered mm. and i even it's even better that i'm saying it because mm. we want this ship to be taken to the harbor with minimum damage mm. meaning still we have from now to 25th i mean uh, 29th of uh, may next year mm. i'm saying it hoping that those concerned may change their minds and take action Mm. many of them don't go through the gates that we go they don't go through the commercial flights they have their private flight they mm. don't even know what is happening at the airport nah. so you see the gentleman i was going was together with was so angry mm. he said was it not you that i gave 50000 i didn't know he gave them money i gave you 50000 mm. i said this one now guy is a bigger ogre now why 50000 hmm. hmm. oh, wow. he wasn't ashamed was mm. his name was everything there mm. now if they have done that to me mm. somebody and they know me very well everybody and, they, Kukosia, the VIP, they, know and they know we have chances more than any other person mm. they should know that the chances are within few months i will be the president mm. and people like that must never think that we will work together in our government mm. because we don't need them mm. they are better people it's either they change we we change them Mm. Either they change or you change them. Yes. You they, they, they mm. shouldn't have any room in any civilized society in airport upon all places. Mm. Okay, what happens to Chinese? What happens to other nationals that come to Nigeria? Mm. If somebody will come a Nigerian and look at me, it's to try by all means to stop me. Mm. And, and you see some of us are afraid of carrying money. Mm. either this our current nigerian currency or even uh, foreign currency we are afraid because you can easily be embarrassed at the airport mm. who told you to carry this money mm. so i didn't have money on me and he was forcing me to give him money i wasn't carrying anything just mm. my briefcase and a few things inside many that. people don't miss their flights miss even their work outside nigeria people will be nigerians where they live abroad where they employ there some come holiday to see their loved ones they don't book say the next day then they start work na for airport either they delay them or they no grill let them travel with one small thing okay. some if you check you get one way come here you carry in paper show us even waiting then they look for day for the paper but they refuse delay them until flight go because they no give money this na some of the things where ordinary people they suffer and people were there for power they no get the opportunity to experience and make them know but it good as you experience this one make i allow you answer the remaining questions so that you go tell <laughs> us um the issue of uh, indigenous form mm. you see here i brought the issue of people residing in kanu i believe that where 
you live is your home. Mm. Now, where is my home today and now? Is this studio. Mm. Whatever happens here is what affects me, good or bad, God forbid. Mm. So that's why we believe that something got to be done to bring Nigerians together. Mm. And let me tell you that today in Kano, there is a place we call New Enugu. New Enugu, inside Kano? Inside Kano, close to the airport. Well, I appreciate them. I produce those plots. We give them to Nigerians. When I say Nigerians, you know what I mean, not mm. only Kano people. Mm. And of course, because many of them got plots there, mm. they decided to buy other plots given to other people. Mm. And they built new Enugu. I'm sure is as good as the Inugu we know. And they are in living Inugu. inside there. They are now. there. Right at the border of airport. Hmm. Now, if you ask them, how many governors, for example, in the east or west and so on have done that? Because that's the starting point. Hmm. You cannot be a governor and you cannot allow even somebody from the same zone with you to go and own a land. Hmm. Many of them don't. I don't want to mention names, mm. but they know themselves. We're not talking of Ario community. Mm. Ario community in many of the states that I know are facing a lot of challenges. Mm. Even places to bury people. Mm. Even places to put their mosques mm. and so on. Mm. In some states, governors would never give. Mm. But how many churches do we have today in, in Kano? Kano? I signed many papers on the, and when I say I do out of my time, I've mm. never been commissioner for land, mm. but I know they have been issued Papers. with my own permission. And you know, stop them. I know, stop them. There was no, I could stop the Nigerians. That na leadership so, without bias. Yes. Mm. So, you see, I think the important thing is for the leaders of today and those of tomorrow to see Nigeria as one country. Mm. where everybody should be free to move, to acquire properties, to do his or her mm. uh, legal businesses, and so on and so forth. Many people made mistakes. And then later they realize they made mistakes. And they don't even know how to correct it. Mm. If you want to be president, you should go and show us in your state where you made new canoe where I will go and see a new Arewa. Mm. Most people not allow that. You mm. cannot even, I'm not even talking about it. I know governors that have refused to allow people from their neighboring states, the mm. same zone, mm. to own property in their own place. Mm. We have them. Now, now many of them are interested in becoming president. Mm. Okay, how, where do you start from? Mm. Now you realize you need those people. Big problem. Mm. So I believe that, uh, especially those who are in government now, mm. they still have time to make corrections. Very Otherwise, correct. they will regret, like those who made the mistakes, especially we wait and see on in 2023 election, mm. the result will come, and many of them will be disappointed yes. because they will reap what they saw. Very true. Um, now the last question you the didn't last answer, question, so, or more, see the... That's uh, Adiza from Dublin. Mm. She talked about uh, factories in Kano and so on. And she even mentioned the issue of electricity, which is just one of the major things mm. that, uh, uh, you see, apart from electricity, we had government policies. Mm. Sometimes they will say at a stage, we want everybody to produce wheat. We want everybody to produce rice. Farmers will move to start production. Along the line, of course, you cannot compete with other countries that have matured uh, uh, system mm. of agriculture. You have to protect your own. Mm. Now, maybe because of political pressure or something, all those protections will just be lifted. Mm. Ban and ban. Now policy somersault. Now with the core policy somersault. Yes. Mm. Big problem. 
And unless government decides to do the right thing, mm. even human being, you just don't come and start talking like that. Mm. You have to go and think very deeply. Mm. But as a gentleman, once you say it, you have reasons why you said it, mm. and you should stand by it. Mm. All those things changes. It's very easy. You are in a comfortable office in the villa or any government house. They say, okay, I'm banned. Uh, you put your signature there. Mm. You wouldn't know the implication. Mm. So governments must be sensitive, must be pro their people. They have to support their people. Mm. They are people first, Nigeria first, and of course Nigerians. Mm. And that's the only way we can su uh, succeed. Mm. Everybody is protecting his own today in the world. Mm. Forget what anybody is saying in all these countries uh, uh, of the world today. Every leader wants his, the good leader would want to see his people being lifted mm. from poverty or lying before the poverty line upwards. Mm. And I'm happy we have done that over the years. And I'm so happy that the results now are everywhere for everybody to see. Mm. I thank Almighty God for sparing our lives and our health to listen to Nigerians from all over the world. All of them, without exception, mm. uh, somehow were saying good things. And to me, it's so important. It's as good as winning the election itself. Mm. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My brothers, my sisters, the person where we they talk with for studio today, where many of you listening to, and people calling from different parts of the world and different parts of the country now, uh, Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso and uh, the presidential candidate for the new Nigeria People's Party. Uh, one thing where we know even tell on about and be say he has played very active roles in conflict resolution, peace and conflict resolution from all parts of the country. No place where he never go and wherever conflict they he they put in leg, put in hand, put in head. Make you see, say, peace happen. In fact, somebody even called, talk about the one where been happened for Enugu somewhere. How in take, eh? If a, Enugu's, Enugu, okay. I, I don't know about if a, but I know, say, if he did, he will also play active role. And no be only Nigeria, even for that, for, for Somalia, a waka by himself, he put himself to make sure, say, peace day. And as he, they do all of these ones, now so he also take the build bridges across the country. Today, when I don't hear Ram, he don't answer on our questions. But we go pack Kaya come out for studio because anything we get beginning, it get end. But before we pack that Kaya come out for studio, Your Excellency, sir, uh, yes. waiting Nigerians go expect from you as you become the president and commander of, and chief come 2023 finally your final word finally thank you very much nigerians by the grace of god should expect unity should expect peace across the country that is not negotiable all mm. the things that are happening we are ready to talk to anybody who feels offended but on the other hand, we'll be ready for everybody to make sure that there is peace in this country. Mm. We cannot continue. We should not continue the way we are going today. Mm. Even if we cannot do anything, we should be in a position to protect all Nigerians, mm. to go to their businesses, to go to the farm, to go to the studio, to go to Kaduna, to go to Brininguari, to go to Sambisa, everywhere in this country. That is key. Of course, the issue of education. I always look at myself and ask myself this question. If not because of education, where would I have been today? That's the question. Certainly not here. I wouldn't have been here. and sitting on this chair, talking to you, talking to Nigerians. And that's why we have to, as leaders, encourage our young men and women to go to education and support them. Let me tell you this, that I had a secondary school in Kano, I mean in Abuja, Nasarawa State. 
because I always have school and farm. Because I know this is our job. Today you have office, tomorrow you know you are jobless. And when I'm jobless, I don't want to disturb my friends, visiting them because I want to leave my home. Mm. And I know if you have school, if you have farm, you will never be bored. Every day you have something to do. So I built that school uh, in 2002. I, initially it was a farm, a chicken farm, but I converted it to secondary school. By last year, I handed it over to Indians. Mm. They took over. And they asked me, how do you want us to do the sharing? I say, go and do calculation. My own share will be given to Nigerians. Mm. Last year, I was given 148 slots that my share for giving them the school. And I gave them to Nigerians. Each state had four slots, two boys, two girls. Now they are in the second year. This year, the same 148. In fact, they are processing now as we are sitting. Hmm. By January, they will start another set of 148. It is only that, that university, that school of that generation, that all Nigerians from all the states are being represented today. Mm. This, because I, you see, what we are doing in Kano, in terms of uh, uh, government sponsorship, our friends all over the country were not happy because many of them believe that they are more concursia than those from Kano. Mm. And that was why after 2019 election, the young men and women in thousands came from all over the world to meet their friends at home. Mm. And that was why, without the support of government, we had no federal government in Kano, we had no state government, we had no local government in 2019. But everybody knew that we won that election. We won the governorship election. There's no question about it. But somebody somewhere decided that uh, the opposition must not take Kano. So that was why, at the end of the day, at the end of that election, I was so happy with the scholars. We call them scholars across the world. Mm. I asked my people around me, I say, any property that I'm not living in, mm. any property that is critical to me, go and sell it. So we sold the properties and we sponsored 370 first class students, Kano residents those who are living in Kano, 370 abroad, mm. they are all back now. Mm. So we will continue. And let me tell you, our governors have missed the points. Most of these states have dilapidated school. Near my, my school here, in my farm here in, in Nasarawa State, we have a school that collapsed 30 years ago. No school in that place. I asked them why the school, they say 30 years ago, it fell down. That's what we did this year during my birthday. Mm. Four classes, one office, toilets, and so on. Mm. Now, my first admission this year, 21st October, we had over 400 children from that village. And that's exact, that's in, 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 in Orawa. Mm. The same thing we did during my birthday in uh, another village close to that. The school collapsed, and first admission again, even in that uh, school. So, so Your Excellency, you say final word, security. If we no fit do anything, at least we go solve the problem of security. If we, we make have to. Yeah. Eh? Yes, that's the, that's Thank the key. You. Number and one. You, number one, and you talk, say education go follow, because if to say you know they educated, you for no get opportunity to do what thing you they do. Even this one alone is there enough. We they comfortable, we they happy with you. I be on no appreciate them. We're gonna give them standing ovation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, what thing you do today, na I opener. Many people, they hear about you. 
but they don't know who you be. They don't even know these kind, wonderful things where you don't they do by yourself, even before you want to be president. But today, an opportunity for them to know. And you don't put your cards on the table. It's up to Nigerians. What we are looking for is good governance. Person where we say he get integrity, he get capacity, join them, and they get track record. Nigerians, both inside Nigeria and outside Nigeria today, don't get they get opportunity to interact with you one on one to ask you questions. One beautiful thing I enjoy about this interaction is how meticulous you day. Not one question, including the ones where you don't answer before. You they return back on them. When you've been the talk, some people talk, say I'd interrupt you. The reason why I'd interrupt you that time is say it get very important points where you they make. But I feel say I needed to highlight those points. Because some people will still return back to ask you questions on those points. Now the reason, nobody say, the thing where you they talk, no they sweet me. Or I won't make I interrupt you. I beg you, make you no verse for that one. Uh, but the things where you talk today, it make a lot of sense to us. And we don't take them. We thank you for coming. We appreciate you. My brothers, my sisters, we don't come to the end of this program. I want to make I especially thank everybody who follow us from the beginning of the program till this point. In no day is it to sit down, listen, follow, ask questions, even try to call, but we know fit pick your call. For waiting at the sea on our telephone, we have missed almost 1,700 calls where we know fit take. On this, sim this telephone alone, the one on this one, they're different. The comments on our social media handle, I know fit read them. Now, because of how important today's program day, if we know if you take your call or read your comment, make you know verse with us. For our crew members, for the management of Brekete family and Human Rights Radio, we appreciate you. Me, we be consultant Ike, a.k.a. Ogaranya Nime Chineke. We sit down today on the authority of the ordinary president, Dr. Ordinary Ahmed Esa Dese Ona. Bye. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Everybody in the open air studio inside the compound of Human Rights Radio and Television, the headquarters of Break the Family Reality Radio and Television Talk Magazine program. Please kindly stand up for the national pledge. After the count of three, with the exception of um, that pregnant woman behind, please sit down, Daddy. Please sit down. You. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. One, 